Welcome to the Next Dimension Podcast, your portal to an extended reality. Every week we talk about the hottest topics in XR and let you join the discussion live on MRTV. And now, get ready for another exciting episode coming up. Hi and welcome to Season 3, Episode 17 of the Next Dimension Podcast, your podcast that's all about VR and AR. And I'm so happy to be back here with Tatiana. Tatiana, how are you doing? We're finally live, huh? <laughs> yeah, it took a while. Hey, everyone. Yes, yes, everything is great. Um, we are, we're here. We're here now. Um, glad to be on the show, Sebastian. Yes. Glad to have you back. Yeah, right. I'm back here in good old Germany in the MRTV headquarter. And sorry for being a tad late, but of course, the German, said German internet did not want to start. I probably was angry because I didn't turn it on here for three months since I was in Taiwan. So now it works. And I'm glad that we're back here now. Yes, back here doing the Next Dimension podcast. So looking forward to this. For all yeah. of you out there who don't know this podcast yet, this podcast is, well, live streamed every Saturday here on MRTV, but this is also an audio podcast that you can listen to everywhere where you can listen to podcasts. So if you want to listen to this while at work, for example, you could do so. And well, if you love this podcast, we would be very glad if you would give this a five-star rating, for example, on iTunes, you could get your iPad or iPhone out, open the podcast app, find the Next Dimension podcast, and leave us a five-star review. This way, more people can find this podcast. That would be so incredible. Yep. So today we're going to catch up. <laughs> well, we haven't yes, been, we, we been have to catch up. It has been a it's while. Been... We haven't done this podcast for, I think, four weeks or so. So lots of stuff to catch up. We are going mm. to talk about, yeah, what you did, obviously, <laughs> Tatiana. And we're going to talk about what I did. Well, I was on a trip to China, as you know, right? So I went to see Pimax, where I checked out the Pimax Crystal. And, well, we're going to talk about the Pimax Crystal in this podcast today quite a lot. I also went to Rokit, where I checked out the Rokit Max. And, well, now I've been using it a bit longer. And also, I used it on the flight from Taiwan to Germany. So I will tell you about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. then also I went to Cut VR actually, the, this um, omnidirectional treadmill. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I went to there too, to their office. And I even have not yet um, published the video that I did there, but I will do that as well. And I can tell you a bit about that as well. And also, we will talk about the Apple headset. Yeah, it is finally going to launch, probably. We're, we're most probably going to hear about it at WWDC, the Apple event which is going to happen this summer. So yes, let's mm -hmm. let's talk about that part as well. Yes. yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's going to be very interesting. So in VR in general, it was a little bit of a quieter time, but it was really yeah. busy for you because you it got was. to visit all these all Yeah, these it was interesting. Yeah, right. It was a bit quiet, agreed. But we do have some new content. We have uh, Vertigo 2, which came out. We also have uh, a new mod, the Crisis mod. We we can mention it. I know we both didn't have time yet to try out these <laughs> these games, but I know you also tried a mod, so we can talk a bit about mods here yeah. as well. And yeah, I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to do that. Before we do that, we would like to thank the sponsor of today's show, which is Bobo VR. And Bobo VR, they are doing amazing accessories for Quest 2 and also for Pickle 4. Actually, they are doing my favorite head straps. And yeah, Tatiana, you have it there, right? <laughs> it's right? my favorite one too. <laughs> it's actually. your favorite one too, right? <laughs> I, so I, You always see them, see me right. wear it, actually. You, you, it's, a, it's kind of a good thing that we're sponsored by them now. <laughs> exactly. It's amazing. I'm so happy. I was so happy about the sponsorship because, well, they are my favorite um, company for headset accessories, right? I am using their headset accessories for the Quest 2. They are my go-to there and also for the Pico 4, actually. 
because mm -hmm. well it is, is it is simply more comfortable and could you show it again probably um the quest 2 <laughs> one you also have this battery right yeah exactly i do of i love they it do. you know they have these yeah. exchangeable batteries <laughs> here you go <laughs> you know they are magnetic exactly yeah. so oh. basically you have now um, solved the the power problem because if it's yeah yeah if if one of these batteries is flat you simply exchange it with a new one and yeah. you, you charge the other one again and it's fantastic it is simply fantastic we're both huge fans of bobo vr so yeah, yeah they also have um, an audio strap now for the quest 2 let me let me go back to that. That's for you. <laughs> you <have laughs> yeah. the strap. Here, here it is, right? Here's now. Here's the auto strap, and I also oh, yeah. have it now. Um, I have not yet um, re re reviewed it yet, but I will do so. And also, very soon, I'm not even sure if I can say that. <laughs> I'm allowed to say that, Ooh. but they will also have cool accessories for the PlayStation VR 2 coming up. Yes. Yes. Exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. There aren't yeah. that many accessories. I do have one accessory. Um, um for the PSVR two, like it's yes. the stand or what? You have a stand, right? I mean, okay, yes, I have a stand, but it's like it's not the accessory that it enhances your a gaming experience, right? It's just for standing in. But I've noticed that there are some people who still find this headset like not the most comfortable. Okay. I guess it depends on the head shape because it's okay. still kind of a halo thing that doesn't have anything on top right. so there is like a little i mean i can't really ah, show like it strap, this like, way but yeah know, like yeah. a velcro strap right that you literally connect it on top it's just a little bit of support on the top okay. of your head how do you like Super it Super easy and simple i i love it i okay, use it cool. i use the same one for my quest pro because that one really needs <laughs> that, something that, like that, that needs it that and, needs um, it for sure I guess it's not as crucial for PSVR 2, um, but, but I, I, I still have one and I use it. So whatever makes gaming easier. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what Bobo VR has to show us for this. So thanks let's again, see. Bobo VR, for sponsoring the Next Dimension podcast. Woohoo! <laughs> and they're going to sponsor the next few episodes as well. However, if you out there would like to get in front of the VR community, and this is definitely one of yeah, the VR shows on the interwebs, you could also get in touch with me or Tatiana if you would like to sponsor a show. Yeah, it is very good. <laughs> we can recommend it to you, sponsoring a show. <laughs> yep, so yeah. thanks for VR. Um, that's amazing. All right, that was the sponsored part of the show, and we're probably going to mention it a few times uh, during during the show as well again to remind mm. people of Bobo VR. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but now let's catch up, Tatiana. So good to yes. see you. How are you doing? And yeah, tell us, what have you been doing? What have you been up to in the last couple of weeks? Yes, it's great to see you as well. And uh, yeah, the VR thing is, of course, all-consuming. I have been trying to do some fun things with it. Of course, Times are busy, side quest is keeping me busy too, and uh, the channel is taking time. Um, so what have I done? Let me think about it. Um, so I I actually, I did play a couple of games, I guess. So I tried the first horror-ish kind of game on PSVR 2 called Switchback VR. Oh, me too. Yeah, um, it's like that horror scary ride where you're riding on rails and there are different monsters jumping on you. It's a jump scare game, but you do have guns so you can shoot them, which yes. helps. <laughs> so you don't feel as helpless as you do when, you know, when it's just stuff happening to you. <laughs> so I thought that was quite fun. Um, I, I don't know if I'll be able to go through the entire game, uh, <laughs> but those who like, a little bit something to get their blood pumping would definitely enjoy it. the switchback VR. I do try to exercise in virtual reality as much as I kind of okay. capable of physically. Let's um, stay let's stay with switchback for a moment because okay. I also because oh, I also yeah. because yeah, I also played it. it. Yeah, I also played yeah. it and I actually live streamed it to my German channel. And um, I'm always kind of afraid of horror games. Right? We talked about this before. Like normally. I'm. I just don't even try it because I know I will be afraid. But I really like the first part of this game, even mm -hmm. though it's also yeah, it's kind of the horror genre. 
but when I played it, when I played the first part with the PSVR one, I actually didn't feel it was so bad. Yeah, a few jump scares exactly, but the rest was like a on rail shooter basically, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like just I don't know something to blow off the steam. There are yeah, a few right. jump scares, but I kind of try to talk to myself all the time so that I don't get scared. But it wasn't as bad as I. Expected, yeah, but on, honestly there are speaking, some rights. yeah, honestly speaking, I I didn't really enjoy it. I must tell you, like, uh, not because I was scared. I I, I didn't feel scared at all. I, I thought this was more like comedy, like sometimes. Comedy? They, yeah, it was, what was what was funny about? It? Yeah, <laughs> like they have these um, sailors which which uh, crawl around, oh, yeah. and I thought. They, they looked like uh, ridiculous. It, it was like, it was laughable, I thought. Then they have these kind <laughs> of rats with those red eyes, which like like uh, float around there. And I also thought it was not so scary. And um, then like also like um, in the technical department, I felt like, okay, the, the resolution is super low. It didn't mm -hmm. look good enough in my opinion. And then they had this kind of one scene where um where you're not supposed to blink and mm -hmm. and like wow this was so hyped up also on youtube like wow wow you can't blink and wow it's, this was super ridiculous okay then I, I tried not to blink but when i blinked then some kind of these puppeteers they just changed the position but i totally didn't feel scared at all like it's not a terrible game but i wow i i really feel it, it's like just like no. <laughs> I think no. the resolution issues you were talking about could contribute to that. If the things are not in focus all the time or the resolution is not that high, then it might not feel as realistic. But they are working on, at this last I've heard, they were working on fixing some of those bugs with, in, with visuals. Yeah. Because that affects how you're perceiving the game. And uh, I mean, some other rides that I didn't get to play, but I was checking them out you know, on some other channel, someone else was playing him. Some of them look pretty dang scary if they are yeah. with that quality that you see on the screen. And uh, I guess it's not that you shouldn't blink. You should, because you, you can't not to. Like, you need to progress in the game yeah. <laughs> so that okay. you blink. But yeah, I think that's one that, scene. that was... There was this one scene. I'm not, I didn't play the whole game through. Probably it's going to change at the end. But mm -hmm. I just felt like the promise of this, um, not don't blink and... If it's... you blink, that something bad's going to happen. Like, yeah, I didn't feel scared at all. And that, that, that's a sad thing to say if you can't scare me. Because normally it's so easy to scare me in these games. Mm. Yeah, so I, I felt kind of bored. Like, I don't know. Wait, how many rides did you play? Say again? How many rides did you play? How many rides? I, I, I played for one and a half hours or something. I, I live streamed it okay. on my German channel. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure that some of them are scarier than others, but the blinking thing, it's, I guess it was just more of a demo of how yeah. you can incorporate. It's a good idea. You know, I love the idea. I, I think mm -hmm. the idea is fantastic to incorporate the eye tracking somehow. Eye tracking. And, it just uh, felt like a gimmick. Yeah. I think like, okay, it's it's a good idea, but it just felt like, okay, we, we use this in this one scene so that we can advertise it. But overall, especially mm -hmm. for the price, I think it's like $40. Oh, no. uh yeah well <laughs> no no, no. <laughs> it's for fans right so it's the yeah. um uh oh my god what's the name of the game switchback no it's switchback but it's the like the original the, game uh, yeah, that the all the characters game. were all the characters were from that original yeah sort of uh, yeah i also forgot it game. right now Trying to remember what the uh, what the name is tell us if um, you people out there on the interwebs <laughs> what, what is the name dark the dark pictures anthology that's what it's ah, called yeah. Okay. um so yeah so apparently all the Rush of all blood, the, exactly yeah all the characters are from from those games okay, so it's okay. like also a little bit of like oh i played this here they are here's that nurse or that demon yeah. or something um but yeah we haven't played it so it was more of a scary game for us um I, I mean, I still think that it's an awesome idea to use eye tracking I, somehow. I agree with you. I, I love the idea. I totally, games. I totally love the idea, but 
it was not scary. <laughs> like if <laughs> I say that, like, okay, that means like, okay, it seems not to be scary. But who knows? Probably it gets better after one and a half hours, right? So I should give the game another chance. But yeah, I was a bit underwhelmed by it. <sighs> Well, it's it's just the kind of genre too. Like even if it was scary, I I wouldn't be able to play that a lot because it's just not the kind of emotion I'm looking for. Yeah, um, same with me. <laughs> the same with me. I want to be happy. Yeah, but I still think I need to do this Resident Evil Eight because I, I want to see technically how good it is, right? Oh god. Have you done yeah. that? Have you done it already? Oh no, uh, no, no, no. I not don't in think your current I'm condition. Yeah, to. you shouldn't do it exactly. <laughs> So uh, that was that's why I was kind of glad in a way that I could manage to switch back the arc. Is like, okay, I don't need to check my blood pressure right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 right, yeah, right. <laughs> I think I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I played that. Anyways. I played this and that. Okay. Just kind of enjoyed my time in VR when I felt like it. Uh, yeah. I also was trying some accessories too. Um, okay, let's talk about it. Yeah. A little no company called Razor little actually known. sent me something. <laughs> Um, so I Honestly, made a video this about looks, this. This as well. looks really good. This looks really good. Like, yeah. S some would say that they are entering the Quest 2 game kind of late, and they I do. agree. It's Everyone has the Bobo VR <laughs> M2 already. <laughs> We're yes. just sponsoring this podcast. But no, everybody <laughs> has I, Bobo VR. It's true, and, right? And that is the headset of a uh, headstrap of my choice. And usually, the way I do it, and I also said it in my video, when I find something that I enjoy, I kind of just stop looking for things that could be better. Because yeah. if you're already happy with what you have, why would you keep like searching up for things? But agreed. But but it was just I couldn't I, I couldn't help myself because it's it razor, so cool. right? Yeah. I mean, look at the shape of it. Does it remind you of something? Head strap. I mean, isn't <laughs> isn't it really similar to the way they had the head strap on the first quest? On the first they, quest, they had this like ah, hole yeah. at the back, yeah, right. but it was all kind yeah, of right. elastic, and this, this looks one good. is soft. So yeah, I I reviewed this. How is it? And, I didn't um, watch it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, the short synopsis is that it's. I've never tried a hat strap like this before because yeah. I, I'm used to, you know, having some kind of a hat strap that uh, you need to tighten on the back and it has nothing on the back. You right. tighten it on the sides and I'm okay. like, geez, hmm. we all have PTSDs from the stock strap uh, that came with, you know, the uh, original Quest 2. <laughs> oh, I must say, I personally, I personally didn't, didn't even find it so terrible the original but yeah this one looks better i could not i could not use the, that yeah, show one us. And, um so with this one the thing is what you do is you just and and that's oh, it that looks good <laughs> I, <laughs> Once oh you it's also this... good for people with long hair yeah you can totally it put is... your this is good how awesome so once you tighten it once to the sides and on the top then you can just put it on and remove it Oh, within okay. seconds wow and nice. i thought wow i've never had a hat strap that i mean bubble vr is great <laughs> um <laughs> but you do need to tighten it and yeah. it's a little heavier so i guess you do feel a bit more pressure because there's nothing in here and there's no battery here of course uh yeah right, but if you're right. you know looking for something that if you, you want to lean back on a plane and you yeah. want to lean back on it that is good that is good or on a chair this will super soft and it kind of stays on your head without really doing any additional manipulations then it's really awesome so so how about the front heaviness because now it doesn't really have the balance thing right it does not so if you're used to something like Google VR I think you'll feel a little bit heavier but I tried some active games with it and um I I was okay with it, honestly. Like I'm still testing it, as you can see, it's on my right. head strip. I so in in the video I have like my raw reactions to it because I I tried it for the very first time. <laughs> that is always good. I like so the, it was the raw funny reactions. The first time, like oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you liked it? Happiness. Yeah? Okay. okay oh, I don't think so. I'm not <laughs> sure. But then as I was adjusting it, like you could see that my opinion was changing right there in the middle of the video. Okay. So. Yeah, 
can go ahead and check it. And there's also a facial interface that. Yeah. What, what is special with. about this the facial interface? I also got the device, but I I didn't <sighs> I didn't have time to unbox it, and I now it's in Taiwan. Stop so. It looks, uh, they they are very proud of that material that they're using here, right? Uh, looks like they are because usually when you get a facial interface, then you get like a, a you know this fake leather material, yeah. but this and is this is silicon. Ah, okay. It's silicon. Ah, okay, all right, right. So silicon. it's the kind of stuff that you just buy like a silicon cover to your original one. Yeah, okay. Like you're very okay. similar to this. Slightly interesting. Different. Interesting. But I like that silicon one because uh, I find the fake leather one too hot Okay. when you play and it kind of leaves marks on your face too. Right. So I prefer, it's like it's like they made it for me because I still use just a regular cover on my original, um, on my original facial interface. But, oh, and it also has vents, I guess. That's another thing that they are trying to promote is that there are little events on the. Oh, hold on. Let me try to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have seen vents um, before in other facial interfaces. Nothing so special. But yeah. the, the build quality looks good. It looks just like a very high quality accessory. And I think that you'll be paying for the brand as well. Yeah. For the name. It, is, it is expensive, right? So it's it like $70. It's not for both, but for each. <laughs> oh, ouch. $69.99 wow. per accessory, which is not cheap. And that is a tough I, call. That is a tough call. So I would say right? that. You don't get a battery. If you're paying, exactly. That's and a point. That's a problem. So what we are with the battery still costs less than that. Yeah. Um, but tough it is call. heavier. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So, yeah. I mean, I. Even if I would like maybe recommend the head strip, I don't see how a facial interface can cost that much. Yeah, it's and the brand. It's but, you're you're but, kind of paying for engineering rather than the material because yeah. the material I don't think it costs that much. But of it's, course not. It's, it's of the course brand. The, the brand, the development, uh, like yeah, all the marketing that they will do, probably. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So. So it's it's one of those things. Like if you can afford it, and you're you want like a light and comfortable and portable option, yeah. then yes. But, but if it you're is on budget, very late in the in the cycle. It is very late in the product cycle. You know, I, I totally believe that probably we would have probably been raving about it if it came out at the same time that the Quest Two came out, right? But we now would... we, we have our stuff, and now we're looking for the next headsets, right? I, I barely use the Quest 2 because I use the Pico 4. It's just better. Hopefully, the US launch is still going to happen at one point in time, you know? And Or you have the, the Quest Pro now, or you're waiting for the Quest 3, which is going to come out. Maybe they're preparing for Quest 3. Maybe yeah. that's like a trial for them to step in the VR game with other headsets too, not just Quest 2. They just yeah. chose Quest 2 because it's still... Like with all things, is still the leading headset. <laughs> like for for like more right, or less right. budget mobile, um, yeah, portable but, game. Budget mobile, agreed. And then you're unlikely going to get a hundred forty dollars yeah. strap and facial interface connection. Alex, yeah. hi Alex, also thinks it's seventy is too expensive. It is. It is way it's too expensive. Probably the hundred forty dollars. You should save that money for the Quest Three that we are all going to get, obviously, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> uh, yeah. right, right, yeah. So, so that's that's something. Oh, but I was impressed because, honestly, since good. Mobile VR, I don't think I've tried a headset that I would be like, okay, <clears throat> I would use it. Like, no, <laughs> this is probably the first headset that I'm like, okay, I. I think I might actually use it now, uh, depending on the situation. Like if I want to kick right. back, you know, on the couch. So I was very right. that makes that right. makes sense for for this use case, right? Like lying lying down or lying back or something. Then these kind of straps are better. Yeah. But so you, try uh, it. Try it. Let let me know what you think about yeah, it. Because maybe you'll be like, "Oh, this is crap. <laughs> like it doesn't fit right on my face." Or maybe you wouldn't like good. the font heaviness. It looks, but it does look it good is. though. Yeah, but you know what I'm wondering in any ways, would the Quest 3 
have like the same compatibility, the same kind of thing to add the straps from the Quest 2. That would be good. That would be cool, right? If we could use all of our Quest 2 accessories with the Quest 3, if it had some kind of like the, the same um, design, you know? Yeah. But, but it seems no. It seems no from the from the leaks that we've seen. It seems it has a little bit of a different kind of yeah um, setup. I don't think Meta cares much about the third party accessories we've been buying for two years. I, 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 you're right. <laughs> they didn't care about the people who bought the Quest One, right? When yeah. they when the Quest Two came out, and also they will want to sell their own new accessories, obviously, right? So, yeah. 100% so, sure it is not going to be compatible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, you can just keep it um, on your Quest 2 if you buy it, if you're still going to be using Quest 2. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's that, that's kind of like a, a thing that I tried, and I don't even review accessories that often anymore um, unless it's something really intriguing, which I thought Razer definitely fits that. <laughs> right. Um, right. Oh, yeah. So another thing that you can see right here is the DPVR E4. All right. Might, yeah. Some might be familiar with that. Some might not. But that's a PC VR headset that has uh, inside out tracking, has its own controllers, and extremely light. Yeah, it is light. It is light. <laughs> is there anything I, in this headset? I also have it here. <laughs> Yeah, I, under I, the I, table. I Everything's under the it. table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember what's going on in that Narnia <laughs> under your table, <laughs> Sebastian. Like how many hats it's on? There? <laughs> yeah. Like a magician just lots of stuff hats. going on here under the table. And yeah, so they just sent it to me. Supposedly, it's slightly improved. I know that you probably. I don't know if you have. Yeah. I know. I have the. I have the new version too as well now. Yeah, I, they so sent it to me. Yeah. They made it glow like the rainbowy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> So I've been checking it outside I, yet. I haven't dived deep into the performance, which I hope it's going to be better than the previous version. This yeah, the is the previous like the version was not ever. ready. The previous version was not ready in terms of software. Like there was were problems in VR. It didn't work. It, yeah. There was latency and it sucked. But this thing is like so cool. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? Uh, and I tried it. I put it on. The Halo strap just makes it comfy. It's super. Again. It's super light and super comfy. Really, yes. it is. My and, goodness. But but, what is the retail price? Do you know that? Can you buy it oh, right now? Um, I was going to reach out to them to clarify that before I make a video. Actually, I I'm, it, I don't think they mentioned it in in the e email exchange we've had. But that is something I'll be reaching out about. Um, so, yeah, I mean. Oh, here. DPVR E4, you can buy it right now, five hundred forty-nine dollars. Good. Yeah, it's for on their website. For a PCVR, for a PCVR and something that has its own kind of, you know, the display port, so it's not a USB cable that's going to be compressed. Mm, I don't know. I can't tell how good or how bad the price is based yeah, on it's you know, tough. the performance. The yet. thing is, it's it's tough because it is competing against the Quest 2 still and the, the, the Pico 4 if you're in Europe. You know? So it's yeah. it's tough. But uh, yeah, it has this DisplayPort connection. Yes. So that's the difference, right? It's, but it, no standalone games, so obviously. Yeah. Um, right. So yeah, this is something I'm working on right now during reviewing this, which I'm trying to like really, really work on this fast because Pimus Crystal is coming. To, to my studio, <laughs> so good. more exciting stuff um, during this slightly quieter period for VR. Yeah. Um, so DP VR, I haven't reviewed it before. This is going to be the first time I'm I'm checking it out. Yeah. Crystal, you know, actually, actually, some things are pretty cool about this headset. So it has actually the the Quest Two this this panel, the Quest Two panel and the Pico Three panel, right? But it has like this Play Port. So you're going, mm -hmm. we're going to see this uncompressed image, and it looks good. It looks yeah. really good, that I can tell you already. Mm -hmm. And the FOV was kind of good. It's like way better than Quest 2. So it has some things going for it, <laughs> surprisingly. I guess it's interesting, right? Because you compare it to Quest 2 and to Pico, but those are standalone hats that yeah, people exactly. buy them for a different reason. Yeah, right. Uh, and uh, yes, so they they do have a better 
image um, quality, but would it compete with other PC VR headsets, which is what we really want to compare them to if this is not a standalone headset? I mean, does the tracking work okay? This is something I want to yeah, know. It does. Because it's a... Uh, it works it's fine. A, um, inside out tracking right <laughs> sorry so to spoil you already with, with that <laughs> like like when i tried it four months ago it was fine so i don't think it's worth worse now that's great news because yeah. that's that's something that worried me and you know with the pimax crystal it's been a process for them and i know that they've been working hard on it i don't know how much work dpvr put in it but it's good to know that it should work so yeah. these are the controllers that come controllers, with it the controllers are also fine mm -hmm. you know like yeah, it's it's not bad. So probably for people who would like to have, yeah, the a really crisp display port, uncompressed image for those people who think like the Quest Two image is still too compressed, right? And who want to have like a better comfort, this might be it because they yeah. also they because they do sell worldwide, you know, like um, yeah, you can get the Pico Neo Three Link everywhere. <laughs> Like normally, I would I would simply um, tell people, okay, you can get the Pico Neo Three Link, which has standalone and Display Port. It's amazing value, right? But yeah, it's not available everywhere. But this one, you can you can order it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm I'm quite excited about it. Yeah, um, it's, the, actually, it's not bad. Impression's great. So this is also something coming soon. Um, yeah. I'm really glad that. <laughs> that there is some excitement happening uh and of course crystal will be coming oh soon. that is going to be oh, exciting God. i'm telling you we're going to talk about it more in the, today's podcast yeah <laughs> yeah so i'm just catching you up on everything i've done because you know yeah. this has been a long time i guess one last thing i'll mention is that i tried a mod for half-life 2 oh I love episode that one mod. ah the new one yeah 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 episode one so um my goodness these mods they make them so good now they <laughs> when you're in it like you it's it's an old game but it literally gives you the feeling like it was made for vr they managed to add these messages that would explain how the controls it's work perfect. and it's and they can great. even say like oh for this part some people may cause some in some people this may cause motion sickness so if you want you can close your eyes for the next like five seconds or something like yeah. that if there is something super quick happening so many notes and and like um yeah just messages from to improve the uh, to yeah to improve like i guess user experience and it's just it's just perfect and it, yeah so like, cool i played the the half-life 2 mod right from the same developer and it's just perfect. It is great. It's just like a VR game. And yeah. Half-Life 2 is like one of my favorite games ever yeah. in not just, obviously not in VR, but like ever in, in video games. So to play this in VR now, the way that we can do it, thanks to those amazing mods. Wow. Right. So, yep. Like so props cool. to the developer. Um, his name is uh, Kabbalistic, um, F. Holger, German. <laughs> amazing work amazing mm -hmm. work and they are also now doing the crisis mod the crisis mod is out right now so people who want to play crisis in vr now they can it's still it's only the beta right now that you can download but my friend and teammate marco he has checked it out already and he says like wow it's super crisp it's super nice image just like how you remember crisis but now in vr and you can play it now already. So mm. great. So if you need some new um, some new content, you can play Crisis in VR, or you can play yeah the mod, the Half Life Two Episode One mod. How long did yeah. you get into it? Did you just um, yeah have a look? I or... played for about forty minutes or an hour. It's not a very long game, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, right. right. One, it's like right. you can you can beat it in like two hours or an hour and a half. So maybe I'm halfway through. Yeah. So good, like so great. And my husband's also like a big fan of Half Life games, so we Perfect. kind of play it together because it's like wow, okay, this is the game that I remember playing, and now it's a <clears throat> totally new view. Um, that's what mods are for. So, yeah, yeah, good times. It's great to be alive <laughs> with all this that, technology. That is, that is true. 
That is true. And I'm also looking time. forward to that VR injector mod where you can play then all of the um, Unreal games in VR. That's going to be so huge. So finally, there's no more shortage of amazing VR goodness that we can play. Right? So, yeah. The modding scene in PC VR is fantastic. That, that is like one of the big um, pros, the big advantages of PC VR. You yeah. know, PC VR has a tough time to compete against the likes of Pico 4 and Quest 2, right? And the PSVR 2, which is amazing. So PC VR is kind of, yeah, on the third place right now, for me, honestly speaking. But thanks to these modders, thanks to the modding scene, it does have a life of its own. And I'm still happy to be able to play PC VR. And there's great headsets coming out, like the Crystal and the Beyond which is also now on the way to the MRTV headquarter. I'm very much looking forward to that as well. So, yeah, PC VR is not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> and that's ma that makes, uh, you know, PlayStation VR's uh, job so much more complicated because they are still cable tethered. They are not mobile or, you know, yeah. lightweight. And they are tied up to the games that they have. So they really need to invest a lot um, to make this exclusive, to make higher quality games on par with Horizon, which yeah. I, to be honest, I don't see that much happening yet. I mean, quite a few games are Quest ports. Um, and based on those sales that were not nearly as high as I guess yeah. we were all expecting, um, it it's doesn't not gonna look save good. VR. <laughs> PSVR 2 yeah. is not going to be the headset that saves VR. Yeah, that is it, for it sure. It doesn't look good for them just because if that's the sales, what are they going to tell to all the developers yeah. who who but, they're trying to convince to make the games? But, but honestly speaking, I must say that these sales numbers, even though they are not high, we also have to keep in mind that right now you cannot just buy the PSVR 2 in any Walmart or in any Target or wherever you buy them in the States, right? You still have to go to the website. You have to know that there is the the P, the PlayStation VR 2 and you have to actively want, want it. So they haven't even rolled out like the full on, um, yeah, uh, like a marketing um, blitz <laughs> that they hopefully will do at one point in time when you can simply buy it in a store. Mm -hmm. You know, or when, when there's going to be some kind of interesting bundles. So yeah. right now, right now it is high priced, you know, and uh, it costs like $550, but it makes sense. It makes sense from, from the business side, because right now what they're doing, they're simply taking all the money from people like us, from people who are willing to pay $550. So it makes sense that this headset costs this money right now. Mm. They can still go down with the price, right? But they can never go up with the price. So instead of like um, giving us the PSVR 2 for $399 right now, obviously it makes much more sense to sell the, the device at $550 for those people, for those 250,000 people who bought it, us. We would have paid even $600, for example, right? Or $700. Mm. And now they can go down with the price or they can introduce some interesting bundles, right? And and then and then sell more of it. So I am not yet concerned about the sales numbers of the PSVR 2. I, I wouldn't write off the PSVR 2 at all. Like I must tell you, I'm still in love with it. <laughs> and I'm still, not writing it off. Yeah, I love when it. I, when I, when I, put <laughs> I wish it, that there were yeah. more people who were buying it right now. That's the thing. Like, yeah, it's a great they will. Asset. I'm, I'm sure. So... I'm sure it's going to happen. I'm sure it's going to happen. Probably it does need to have a more interesting bundles. Probably it does need to be available at. Where do people buy these in the U.S.? <laughs> where do people buy PS5s? I don't even know. Like Target or. Anyway, please write down where you would where you would want to see it. In which store in the U.S. do you need to see that? <laughs> but here in Germany, I know, right? But um, also here, we also have to buy it from the website. So it is still not easily accessible. And I believe it is going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm Best Buy. That's that's exactly that, that's where we want to see it at Best Buy, for example. So I'm still not concerned about the PSVR two. Yeah, yeah, I still believe well, it. Yeah, 
hopefully yeah hopefully we'll yeah. see more more from them soon like it is a great headset um yeah just kind of gd7 <laughs> you know i'm i'm just back here oh into, yeah yeah, into, yeah i'm i'm just back here into the mrtv headquarter for the first day and my my steering wheel is in the next room and I, finally i will be able to try gd7 with a steering wheel oh, oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. Oh, this makes all the difference. I yeah. I can't go back. You you really can't go back once you try it with the steering wheel. Oh wow, I'm I'm so looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and this, yeah. So I'm sure there's going to be great games coming. Obviously, I agree with you that we want to see more games, right? More mm -hmm. like triple A games. We need them, and I'm still hopeful. So. Yes, but it's not going to be the headset that saves VR. You, we had like very high hopes, right? Like us, the hardcore VR community, it was like, wow, the PSVR 2 is going to change everything. It's going to be the holy grail. Probably no. <laughs> like, like well, that, there were that, some strange, that, yeah. there were some strange expectations from it too. There are people who were dreaming up different things. Like there are people who are dreaming up about Half-Life Alex coming to oh, yeah. uh, PSVR I, I still 2. Hope, I still hope for that to happen. <laughs> It's not gonna happen. Oh, no, <laughs> there are new games. Um, there are people who are like seriously hoping that it it'll have some PC. Oh yeah, PC but that for sure is not gonna happen. VR. Yeah, right. Yeah, so like looking at that, I'm like, okay, let's be realistic though about what's going to happen short term with PSVR two. We have these games. Um, they are, you know, we have Horizon, we have GT Seven. We have Resident Evil. Those are going to be leading games. Then there will be some ports from like mobile um, uh, headsets. And right. then we'll see what's happening. Like we will see what, what what's the response from the community on that. And, <laughs> and then we hope that we'll get even more games and some kind of upgrades. I still think that quite a few things can change with software up upgrades on PSVR 2. Like we might, yeah, we might see some good changes there. Oh, I still can't believe it that when I stream with the PSVR two, I cannot see the chat. I can't believe it. That's such an oversight. It was so amazing on the PSVR one. If you would stream to YouTube, you would see the chat like appearing in VR. It was so good. It was like so much fun to um, talk with the community like this. But on PSVR two, no. So this is such a strange oversight that I don't get. So Sony, if you're listening to this podcast, get your beep together and make the make the chat appear in VR. Yeah. At least it. the recording and streaming is so smooth. It's yeah, so easy. It is oh good. Yeah, it is good. It just makes me want to create more content just on those games because of how easy it is to to record and I just trust that everything will be there, you know, audio will be synchronized, it will not crash. I'm like, <laughs> Meta, right. take some notes, please. But yeah, there's just some content creators struggles. I don't know if people want to hear that. <laughs> it's not the gaming side. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, anyways, that, that, that's, they, they that's can improve was... it. They can really improve it. Yeah, absolutely. They yeah. should improve it on some in some areas, but I think they are in a good way and I'm still excited about it. And I saw somebody in chat, Simon, he said like, he's still, he's still not sure if he should buy it. Yeah. Not bought a PSVR 2 yet. Feels like a mixed bag. Yeah. Not everything, not everything is perfect on this headset. I agree, Simon, but the overall package is just so good. You know, I feel so immersed in this headset, even though there is some Mura, right? Even though it has Fresnel lenses. But overall, the colors are amazing. The FOV is nice. And you have this force feedback in the trigger, which just makes all difference when you shoot in games. Overall, it is a buy. It's a strong buy. And I vouch for the headset. And you can buy it. And if you don't like it, you can be angry at me. But I vouch for this headset. Whenever I put it on, I have a smile on my face and I'm telling you, I have them all. <laughs> you know, I have all the headsets, but this is just a a fun headset. And yeah, really. Simon, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree yeah. with all that. 
I've been blabbing for a lot though. Like 45 minutes in, I was just talking about things that I've yeah, been it's doing. Okay. It's just a catch up episode, <laughs> right? You know, it's yeah. okay. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. I want to hear what you've been doing too. You oh, yeah. had such an exciting month. Tell me. I tell did. Us all about this. I did. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, first of all, um, I'm back now in Germany, as you can tell, in the MRTV headquarter, but I had been in Taiwan for the last three months, which was amazing. My mm -hmm. wife is from Taiwan, and we will spend like half year now in Taiwan with her family and half year in Germany with, with my family here. So, yeah, you will see me go back and forth. We have a place now there as well. Yeah, you've seen me um, <laughs> in that, in that uh, apartment whenever we, I went live before. So, yeah. Was has been an amazing time, and yeah, Taiwan is just such such a wonderful country with freedom loving people, and it's just like so good. It's just beautiful, beautiful to be there. Yep. So that was good. Um, yeah, you you've seen me go to the um, HCC headquarters. No, no, not at the headquarters. I went to HCC events to check out the Elite XR. That's what I did. Did some other things there, and it was just wonderful to be there. Then I did a trip now to China, and that was interesting too. It was amazing too. Met I met Pimax, did lots of had lots of hands on time with the crystal. We're going to talk about that experience here on the podcast today. Um, I went to um, Rokit, where I checked out this year, the Rokit Max. It's a fantastic device, really nice for watching videos and for playing cloud games and streaming. Wow, it's they are so sleek, you know, these headsets, micro OLED, nice. Um, yeah, I went to CutVR as well to check out their latest omnidirectional treadmills. Nice as well. They have great plans for the future. Looking forward to to show you that as well. And it was simply incredible just to be where all that stuff is being made, you know. You can really feel that, yeah, that that spirit in China, right? Because all the, of the stuff or most of the stuff is simply being made there. And mm -hmm. to be there and to, to see from the inside how these companies operate, to see Pimax, that, that was so interesting. Yeah, like it's to, pretty to, cool that you managed to to actually go. Like I said, it was kind of quiet, but you yeah. were having so much fun. Oh, I, I had so much company. fun. It was so great to meet them. Right? They're so nice people. It was so cool to have this interview with the CEO. Like I had a I had a like like a such a nice interview with the CEO of Pimax, and I asked all the hard questions and got great answers. I felt I. I hope that um, yeah the community enjoyed that interview that I did with Pimax. That was great. And we're going to talk about Pimax a bit more later. But yeah, let me first tell you a bit more just about this trip to China. It was yeah, it was interesting. It was just interesting to see th to see that the super high tech. I I would never have ex expected it to be that like technical or how how I say that like, that like everything futuristic <laughs> futuristic yeah somehow futuristic somehow completely different from from germany for example or from from other countries so it is so super convenient for chinese people to be there because everything is being paid with with, with their phones right everything they pay everything with an app with with wechat Mm -hmm. it, is, it is incredibly uh, convenient for them, <laughs> you know, like everything, every single store, the, the small snack store on the night market, the supermarket, uh, the vending machine. Everything, was it easy, everything was it easy for you to set it up like that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going to get to that part in a moment. So, <laughs> so everything, everywhere you go, there's only a QR code. You you take out your phone, you open that that app, that WeChat app, you uh, you scan it, and then you pay. And in every restaurant, you know, like I, I'm German, like I'm old style. We go to the restaurant, we we check the menu, you know, the paper menu. We have to wait for the waiter to come. We tell the waiter what we want, and that's it. There, on every single table, every seat has the QR code. You everybody just takes out their phone. 
opens the WeChat app, scans this QR code. You have all the menu of every restaurant there. You make your order there. Everyone makes their order by themselves, directly pays, and the things just come. It's 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 crazy. Who brings them? Robots? <laughs> Who brings the food? <laughs> no, no. It's still it's still the the people there. It's still obviously, but you don't order anymore. You just do everything in the app. It is crazy. So it's the mm. most it's the most um, convenient thing ever for the Chinese, but it is the most inconvenient thing for foreigners. So I went there with cash, with paper money, yeah. and I was unable to pay for things. It's completely useless, paper money. Oh, and, wow. and then I tried to set up this WeChat app, right? I have WeChat and I use it to, to chat with my Chinese friends and, bu and business partners. And um, it is impossible for foreigners to set up WeChat to pay because you will need a Chinese bank card. Our Visa, uh, MasterCard, and American Express are not good there. It's crazy. Okay. You cannot so you put that in. I, I could put that in, but then it still asked me to have like a Chinese bank card, which obviously I don't have. So I was not able to use this WeChat app for anything. I couldn't pay... The, the the I couldn't get an Uber like they have a Chinese version of Uber right so of course they it's do. <laughs> yes of course and I couldn't use it I had to ask my Chinese friends and Pimax and so on to to order the cab for me I could do nothing it was so crazy and then like I went to Starbucks right I thought okay my last hope Starbucks <laughs> and um okay I um yeah uh, I ordered like a coffee and I told them like here. I have this cash and the person looked at me like as if I come from the stone age. <laughs> I'm like like what? What, what 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 is wrong with you? You idiot. What? But what they don't get tourists? I mean no, I, they I, have I, to they, be they, tourists. There was in Shanghai. Just... There was in Shanghai. You know, yeah, there must be tourists. And then then um like um he was like super nervous this guy at Starbucks and he he went back to find like cash to uh, to to exchange for me right to give me to to give me the um to how to say it, to to the spare or yeah but he couldn't and then at starbucks i was able to pay with my visa card <laughs> <laughs> i was very relieved to that but it so was you you survived on coffee <laughs> i, I was months. able to buy coffee in shanghai yes but it was crazy and uh, yeah, I must tell you, like, I'm honestly, in Germany, sometimes we're not able to pay with card. They want still cash. And I was always angry at Germany for that. But honestly, I must tell you, yes, cash, being able to pay cash is really freedom. They cannot check who is paying that. They, they, they cannot, like, control you, you know? Like, guys and girls out there, be happy that you can still use cash that you still have the freedom to use cash so before i was really feeling like oh wow germany is so behind with that cash thing why do people still enjoy paying with cash but you know what it is great <laughs> that you still have this freedom that nobody can control what you're buying so yeah yeah that's true freedom US, cash in the us i guess you can still pay with cash in some in many places but it's it's a lot more well based on cars and it's not the same as like one centralized app where you're basically yeah, yeah. control control yeah. under surveillance of course um of course. hopefully we won't get there i do enjoy the comfort of just using a credit card instead of carrying same, cash same same for me and just it's for good. safety right safety is yeah. the main reason agreed Not and, so and much. you know it's it's great that you have like several options like visa master which are not like connected to the government mm -hmm. you know so that is good but it's still great that we have the ability to pay with cash okay this has nothing to do with vr but i'm still <laughs> simply letting you know about my trip to china Social so, message. <laughs> so yeah yeah enjoy your cash enjoy freedom enjoy not being tracked you know yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah. 
it's was, something you had to experience. Yeah, to... yeah. I was so glad when I when I came back to Taiwan and I was just using cash, using my Visa card for all these free things. I was good. <laughs> okay, so it yeah. was totally different in Taiwan. Then they they don't follow the same or the analog of the system that yeah. they have in China in terms of payment. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, yeah, a bit scary, honestly speaking. So it's it's very inconvenient for foreigners to use to use that system. And um, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> and then there, there was just one thing. There was just like yeah, the part that was not so great. And but I, I met great people. That that is really the good part. I met wonderful people, and the people that I met were just great. The people at Pimax, the people at Rokit. The people at, um, yeah, Cat VR and all the people, also the people that I met on the street. I, I had a great time there. It was beautiful. So mm -hmm. we had an, a good time, just yeah. like <laughs> I enjoy my freedom and cash. <laughs> <laughs> so you stayed in the VR community even when you were in yeah. China. Yeah, so... exactly. That was that was fantastic. And he, I'm glad that I talk. went. And I'm 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 also looking forward to go again, to go again to Shanghai. Next time I want to go to Beijing. I want to meet Pico. I want to meet Enreal. I want to meet so many of them. It's it's great to meet them in person. Yeah. And you speak the language. I do. Oh, cool yeah, is that? I do. You I do speak. Can... Thanks. Thanks I'm to sure my wife. Can... I'm sure you can build even stronger connections with them. Yeah. Because of that. Right, right. I do. I do. It's it's uh, always refreshing when I start to speak Chinese and the people are kind of, yeah, surprised probably and like, ooh, <laughs> like, ooh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is That was cool. Yeah. So do you want to talk about this, ex more about this, like... Yeah, the in-person experiences, or what, right. what do you want to talk about? Yeah, exactly. Let's do this now. Let's let's start, let's go back to VR. <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to VR, and yeah, let's talk about it. So, yeah, how about we we start probably with with um, yeah, let's talk about a bit of what Cat VR. So, Cat VR, they are the makers of omnidirectional treadmills, and I I, I have one here the cat mini or cat c i think oh god i don't even know which, which number it is but anyways there in in um hangzhou another city i got to try the the latest version of their cat vr and they made quite a lot of progress with that because before whenever you walked on that treadmill the um, translation into vr was based on the frequency of the steps so if you would um, kind of um, fast um, walk, like uh, have a lot of frequency in your steps, that would translate to, okay, you're going faster in VR. So you could kind of fake it. If you just made these mini steps, but very, mm -hmm. very fast, very frequent, then it would translate to fast movement. But now on their new one, actually they have completely revamped the shoes and now there's some optical sensors in the shoes. And now, really, the distance that you really walk in in that um, yeah kind of treadmill, that will translate to how you how fast you walk in VR. And that is a huge improvement. So I kind of liked the original already, but it, it just felt like, yeah, it's too tiring. Yeah. It's it's like a sports, but. Also, that part is a bit better now on the new one because it, it just feels a bit more smooth to walk in those new shoes. So overall, really nice improvement. You are going to see my video about the Cat VR, the new, the new version. And yeah, cool. Have you tried those things? I've tried it once, but it wasn't like it it was way older one. I think it was like not a VR arcade, so it was something like a VR gym. I would say there's one in my city where they um well they have all this VR equipment there for people to try and uh um they had a couple of of those machines but they were older ones. I haven't tried the newest one and I yeah. I, I could get it but honestly I my only Cable concern with that is the <laughs> Here is this space <laughs> yeah yeah you exactly do, you do need to have a dedicated yeah. space for something like that and um I'm still kind of working on deciding whether that's something I'll be using frequently enough to justify just the space that I'll be using for right, it. I think right. it's a great idea, but 
not for every game. I guess that is more like someone said in the chat that you really need to want to walk all that distance you really, in VR. Exactly. If you really want to have a super immersive experience where you don't just use your thumb to walk, that's it. That is really for you. And um, I was surprised because before, when I used the Catwalk C1, actually only I was able to play PC VR games. But now they have done some development magic, and now you can play Quest 2 games. Mm -hmm. So that was really cool. And I That's tried cool. I tried Resident Evil 4. Funnily, that was my the first time that I tried Resident Evil 4 on the Quest 2. And actually, I liked it. It was so good. <laughs> and, and I walked in that Catwalk C2, and... It was a good experience. It was a really good experience. I was surprised about that. Mm -hmm. So for people who really want that immersion where you really walk and where you are ready to yeah, burn some calories, right? Because, well, you burn calories with that for sure. That might mm -hmm. be it. That might be it. It's and it's not so huge, actually. It's not so huge. Actually, um, if you have some space... Yeah, if you have a room, then you could put inside. This is really made for us, for consumers. That's the interesting how, part. Thousand ninety nine dollars now. <laughs> how, how's the compatibility with games? You said that it's like, uh, you know, Quest Two, but is it every yes. game that basically uses thumbstick for navigation? Um, that, you can, that, that's a good it works question. For every game? Uh, that I don't know. Uh, I have to ask them this part again. But I believe um, I think it, it has to have free locomotion. That game yeah. for sure. And uh, but I don't know about the compatibility of of the games. That that part I have to ask them again. Or mm -hmm. probably you can find it on the on the website here. Yeah, it's interesting because if it just translates, you know, um, any of these locomotion uh, navigation from any game to cat VR kind of free walk style, then it's great because all it needs yeah, is that it functionality. It doesn't need to have an individual game support like like. Um, like the haptic vests, right? Where they right. actually need to have that exactly. because profile walking, for that game. Is the so same I wonder I wonder if this is universal some thing. Right. Because that would justify, I think, the purchase. Yeah. Any game literally can be played in it. Um, yep. I don't think it's any game, but um let me get back about this. I, I'm going to make a video obviously about this, about my experience. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I was I was really liking it. And also for the Cat VR C2 now, you have this retractable chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, actually, this is cool because um, probably you, you are suddenly then sitting in a in a car in VR, uh -huh. right? Probably you are playing GDA um, like um, five, the the VR mod, and then you mm -hmm. you get into a car, and then you want to sit, and then boom. You can use this this chair, and this um, the plate here where, where the feet are on. Actually, they even have a vibration. So mm. once they detect that that you are sitting or that you are in a car somehow, they will start vibrating here. So it feels like you are your car vibrates. It's well done. That's awesome. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I was surprised. I was surprised how much better this is than the one that I have here, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh. Oh, it showed the compatibility. I saw PlayStation VR 1. I wonder if they will support oh, really? the second one. You okay, see this? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, you're right. Exactly. Hmm. No idea. Well, we have th that is some quite I will have I will have to ask them again about that. But <laughs> honestly, that was nice. So $1000 $1,099, not too shabby, honestly speaking. But yeah, mm -hmm. it also costs like, I think, $200 or $300 to ship that. So probably overall, it's going to be more like $1,400 or what. Yeah. Oh, uh, to my question, by the way, I'm checking yeah. their website at the top. They do have a tab with games, Steam games and Oculus games. So it looks like it does have these profiles that need to be ah, set up for each okay, game. Okay. But just like with the haptics... Yeah. You just check if the game has the compatibility. Okay. So probably that's why you tried her, um, uh, Resident Evil. Right. Maybe that, that is... was one ah, of yeah, the games. games. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, right. So here you can check which games are supported. Even Quest standalone games. Oh, look at this. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. 
quite a okay. few. Look at this. These are quest games. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're interested in finding out which games are supported, if your favorite game is supported, then you can simply go to Cat VR, go to games, and then yeah, you can check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, interesting. I'm still, yeah, I'm really. still thinking. It's like the geek in me really wants the, it, this but is they're really realist... something for geeks. <laughs> yeah, but the you know someone who's more realistic, like, yeah. are you actually going to use it? Sometimes you're too lazy to just put on a headset. That that is truly like, the point. Let's be real. <laughs> like... <laughs> no, that is truly the point. Like honestly oh. speaking, my one it just stands there, and I didn't really use it. The, yeah, you know, it's like, okay, do I really want to strap me in there now? Do I really want to? Uh, lose more calories. That part I would need actually if I look at my beer belly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then in the end it doesn't happen, right? Yeah. But I, I truly know there are some people who just want to immerse themselves fully, you know. So yeah, I think it is a niche product in a niche market, but it is good. I enjoyed it. So uh, Red Matter Two is supported. Oh my wow. gosh! It should have the thing where you jump and it like lifts you in the air for <laughs> that, a little bit. That Aww. would be cool. That, <laughs> that would be, be cool. So great. But that would be a bit more expensive than thousand dollars, though. Yeah, maybe a bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah, I would yeah. love to try the newer the newer one because um, I think the one that I tried probably I I don't know for sure, so don't quote me on that. But it was probably just Catwalk C. Just maybe the previous model, yeah. And uh, it just it just didn't feel natural, like running in it. Got it. It is not natural. It's still not mm -hmm. even with this one, right? It's not walking. It's some new form of movement. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, but it's it's better. It's it's quite smooth. I enjoyed it. Yep. Have to work on that video now that I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> there was there was Cat VR and. We should watch them. They are working on some interesting things that will come out in the future. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that I cannot talk about yet. So they are working on it. Yeah. So let's talk about then the next um, the next company that I visited, and that was Rokit. Oh yeah. And they are making these. Ah, it does not focus here now. Put your hand behind yeah, yeah, right, it so right. that it's trying to focus on your face. <laughs> oh, here. here we go. Here we go. Beautiful. These, this is the Rokit Max. And these glasses are, yeah, well, I call them video glasses. You know, probably they call them AR glasses. But honestly speaking, they are more made for consuming content. These don't have sensors, so they are not aware of your environment, but they will simply put a very, very nice floating screen in front of your eyes. And they are very sleek. You know, so it looks <laughs> something like this. Like from the Matrix, Let like the just, glasses that Neo yeah, was wearing. i show you right now. So it does, it does look, yeah, like, like sunglasses. Quite, quite like sunglasses. Is the screen following your eyes, or is it like a three D space where you look? But no, around, it is stuck. But... It is stuck to your to your view. So if I okay. move, it's going to move with me. It is. Okay. It is not AR, so it's not like stuck in a place and yeah, it would stay there. No, it is. Mm -hmm. It is stuck where it is. Right. So, yep. Okay. That that is okay. That is that is actually for some things it's good. Like for example, if you want to lie down. Right, and you simply want, still want to watch your video content. That is that is good. But of course, if you would if you would want to work, then uh, on a screen, right, and then you have to use your eyes actually to look to the left of the screen and the right of the screen. That that can be tiring. So, in my mm -hmm. opinion, this is a fantastic device for watching videos and for playing cloud games. The, the virtual screen that is being shown to you here is beautiful. It is just beautiful. It's micro OLED, right? So you have perfect blacks, you have very vibrant colors. The resolution is just great. So you, there's no screen effect. It's just a perfectly clear picture. It, it has 2080p displays, micro OLED. 
So 1080p doesn't sound great. And I did see in my comments like, oh, only 1080p. <laughs> What's going on with that? But this is micro OLED. So 1080p on a super tiny micro OLED display, that is good. And for the, um, the FOV of this, which is like 50 degrees, so it's way less than the than the um, VR headset that we know, for this FOV, it is a super perfect picture. So the FOV, while for VR headset, it seems to be small, right, 50 degrees, it is still the biggest for this kind of category, right? This compares against the Rokit Air, the predecessor, but also it competes against the Unreal Air and the mm -hmm. Unreal Light. And they have more like a 45-ish or 46-ish um, FOV. So, yeah, it is a bit bigger, the FOV, but it is, you can see it. It is beautiful. And it also has really good audio. So that is what's, what's better now compared to what we had before. You can really use this and you have very good audio, better than before. You yeah, said you didn't like the Unreal as much, right? No, I, I did. I also like the Unreal Air. I also like the Unreal Air. But mm -hmm. you know what I like better here in this headset is that I can adjust for my myopia. It has diopter adjustment. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, it's a bit dark, right? You cannot really see it. But um, here you have like two dials. So for, for each eye, you can simply set your diopter from zero to 600. And yeah, for many people that is enough. Like I have like a minus 200 or so. And yeah, I simply set it up here and then I have a perfectly clear picture without having to use any glasses in this. So absolutely amazing. Cool. Really, so really you, amazing. Yeah. And you can connect them to like a TV or to yes. a laptop or to yeah, a right. Steam Deck. Everything that has like um, yeah video out on USB. So yes, you can simply connect it to your um, to your Steam Deck. Exactly. I don't have one, unfortunately, <laughs> but I know people who have it and to use it like this. Um, yeah. Greetings again to my team member Marco, who is using it like this. <laughs> so it comes with a USB. C to C cable. You can uh, put it into your Steam Deck. You can put it into your Android um, phone. If your Android phone has the video out over USB, like mine has it. Not every has, not, not every um, smartphone has it, but the yeah the flagship devices will have it for sure. But the interesting thing is that they are going to come up with a little. They call it station. It is like a little device, like like a phone without the screen, which connects, which you can connect to this. And it's going to be like very cheap. Like the Chinese version is like 80 euros or so. And then the content is going to come from this little machine. So then you don't need to have a phone. You don't need to have an iPhone. The iPhone is not comp compatible anyways. Um, you don't have to use your Android phone. You simply use that little mm -hmm. station and then you can use it to play Xbox cloud gaming or to you to watch Netflix and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So yeah, really cool. Really, That's really great. cool device. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that kind of makes me want to get it because you know for traveling, that's definitely something I would. Yeah, we want to use. I did try. I did try my class too. Yeah, for watching movies, but again, like it's, I would have to use a soft strap. Now I probably would use something like a <laughs> razor soft strap, but uh, of course, like a portable, portable pair of glasses like this would yeah. be better. That is really cool. And now I actually really used it on the flight from Taiwan back to Germany. Mm -hmm. And it was fantastic. It was simply fantastic. I hooked it up to my Android device and I also got this Rocket Hub. And with this Rocket Hub, I could, I could um, charge my phone while this was connected to USB-C while I had the glasses in my phone. So yeah, I had a huge screen, like, I don't know, like a 65 inch TV, like a one or two meters away. And I watched and watched all the Netflix shows that I had stored <laughs> on my phone. And it was just as if I had like, as if I was sitting in a cinema, but I was in, 
yeah, I was sitting in the plane. <laughs> so you were you yeah. were watching, right? You weren't like playing some games. No, no, but... I wasn't playing. I wasn't playing games. Um, yeah, cloud cloud games. Obviously, you would need a fast internet connection, which I didn't have in the plane. But I could have played some Android games as well. But I didn't do it. I was simply watching Netflix. Mm -hmm. like videos that I had downloaded before. Yeah. So, oh, I want that. <laughs> yeah, it, it is <laughs> really so it is cool. it is really some something that I can see people use. It's actually useful. So, I would rather not wear the Quest 2 in a plane, right? But this is something that I can see normal people wearing without feeling like funny. Right? So, yeah. this is cool. This is really cool. You can pre-order it right now. And yeah, if you use code MRTV, you can get $20 <laughs> off. Yeah, right. And I, I don't even get a kickback for this. This is just for you guys. If you want it, you can get $20 off. And I like it for that use case, for that use case of having like a, a mobile display with me wherever I go. Yes. But nice. do you think it's worth it, the price? Because it's still, you know, yeah. it's just a display. You don't right. really Agreed. It's use still, it for yeah, anything, Yeah, right. right? It's, it's still, and the price is like Quest 2 yeah. price, isn't it? Agreed. It is, let's say, it is not the impulse buy price yet, right? Once these get to $200, I believe most of us will simply have them for that use case for traveling. You know, yeah. but me now, as a... As a frequent frequent flyer, especially now that I'm like always between Taipei and Germany, mm -hmm. yes, the, the four hundred dollars is absolutely worth it. Yes, so so if you have this use case, if you're flying a lot, or if your partner is using up your main screen for <laughs> Korean TV shows, <laughs> and you still want to watch your own stuff, yeah, also. I would say yes, it is a recommend recommendation even now. But I agree, if they are $200, then it's going to be like the impulse buy for people. Now it's still more of a luxury, cool device for us enthusiasts or for frequent flyers. Yeah, yeah. I think for frequent, it yes, yes, this is really the perfect gadget for frequent flyers. It's yeah. all going to change though, like every technology is going to get cheaper. It's still so novel. Um, not considered mainstream. So if, yeah. if it does work for what it's made, but it, yeah, the price will drop. Exactly. It will become something everyone has but potentially. I, I really think we're getting there now with this use case of a huge screen. You know, with the Unreal Air, it's also beautiful. With, with, with the uh, Rocket Max. Yeah, we're getting to a point now where I think the utility of this is getting where, yeah, 400 is acceptable for these for these special use cases <laughs> interesting yeah really interesting yeah and it's cool that more actually more of these are coming out right i mean nreal yeah. kind NREAL of great. does the same thing they're doing right? exactly the same thing <laughs> like nreal and rokit they are uh, yeah they are competitors and uh, to be fair i also want to visit nreal right i was at rokit now next time when i'm in beijing nreal if you're watching this i will visit you as well <laughs> yeah, so cool, cool, cool stuff. I wonder mm -hmm. if I wonder, yeah, what our what our um, uh, community thinks about it. So, simply want to ask you guys out there: Is that something that interests you and that you could see yourself buying, even for this four hundred and thirty nine dollars asking price? Say yes if you could see yourself buying this, or say no if you think like, hey, this is cool, but it's still like the price is still over my budget. Yeah, let me know. Let, let us know. This is a live show. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> you people out there. Yeah, we haven't done any polls in a while. Yeah, you're right. That is something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. ED yeah. 2K9 now says not yet. Not for now. Okay. Okay, yeah. Julian says don't travel enough. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, I I the Steam Deck, I love my Steam Deck, but... Uh. Oh, you it have does one. I don't have, have a... one. <laughs> yeah, 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 I have. I've, I've used it, and you uh, love it? I, yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> I kind of play odd games on it. Uh, <laughs> there are some games, you know. It's still a tiny screen. I wouldn't. I just know that I probably wouldn't enjoy playing something like 
The Witcher or No Man's Sky on it because I really want to see it on this big screen and be like, wow, this is amazing. Um, but uh, with a, you know, with a um, Steam Deck, I kind of play older games, I guess. Okay. I mean, okay. maybe, maybe you've, You've played it. Maybe some of the, the um, community played uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3. Okay, I haven't played That's that. That's like no. a strategy game. It's a, a turn-based strategy. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's a really old, but but they remade it for like Steam. And I'm just having such a great time playing like this older game on my on my Steam Deck. But with something like that, you know, like with the Rogue Kid or with the Unreal, there was another pair that I tried at CES. I can't quite remember what ah, okay. what that was, but that's exactly what I would Stella? use. Mm. Was it some? Uh... I need to check my video. I I never made a video about it, but I okay. I wanted to. They they said they would send it to me when this when it's ready. But they um yeah, but that's something that would make me use Steam Deck uh, right. for for more than for more than just those little games because I would have a huge screen, but I wouldn't have to be tied up to my living room. I could like play anywhere in the house or not in Honestly the house. Speaking, I don't that know. is that is like a really, really perfect accessory if you have the Steam Deck. Like you you don't need to hold the device like this. You could lie you could lie on your bed and simply have the device in your lap and yeah mm -hmm. look stare it's like yeah to the ceiling and still have this huge screen in front of you so yeah, yeah. oh now i need a steam deck <laughs> yeah, no, i don't <laughs> yeah. have a steam deck i think it's a perfect oh device God. for yeah. this because it's portable right it's right here so you literally like you're connecting it to your phone but you can mm -hmm. play actual nice steam uh games instead of like android games which you can still play yeah right right yeah, Steam Deck. Okay, cool, cool. I, you know, actually, I have backed something on Kickstarter. This has nothing Ooh. to do now with uh, with VR at all. But, oh no, what is it? But uh, yeah, let me wait, let me let me find that on Kickstarter. It's um, it's a handheld device. It's a handheld device that is something like something like the the Steam Deck, but it's it's made only for streaming. It's called the Absolute. Absolute. Have you heard about this? No, I have not. What is it? Wait, let me let me find it on let me find it on Kickstarter and show it to you. Yeah, it's something like the Steam Deck, but it's mm -hmm. it, it only it's on it's based on Android and it's made for streaming. It's made for Xbox, it's made for PlayStation VR. No, not PlayStation VR, PlayStation. Mm. So it's cool. It's very cool. Wait so you more. can play kind of like cloud-based cloud handhelds cloud-based stuff and android-based stuff is and, it and some Pimax, emulation stuff is it what pimax is trying to do yeah, yeah something portal? similar yeah, yeah exactly oh. yeah yeah right oh my goodness well what, what <laughs> does right pimax now? know that you backed it up mm. <laughs> that's that's what we did <laughs> that would be sad if i if if if, if if they would care about that okay now i find it <laughs> they would be sad if they cared about it. yeah because yeah. that's something what they're i mean that that's their whole idea right the yeah but, but for them it's more about uh yeah vr, VR. as well right vr yeah oh it sucks that it you know the, the problem is they have um this absolute thing this this kickstarter they have a strange um way of writing it they write like a app a b x y l u t so it's super tough to find it damn <laughs> that's a bad that's a, yeah right that, that is really yeah anyways also asus they are also coming out with a steam deck competitor called ally have you heard about this oh goodness so many handhelds hard to keep track of them all yeah yeah right is it is there also steam uh or is here it... it is i found it i have backed oh. this app uh, Absolute, but you, you absolute, yeah. It's a strange way to write it, right? A B X Y L U T E. But um, yeah, it only cost me like two hundred dollars, and it has a huge screen, a seven-inch screen, and the screen has a higher resolution than the Steam Deck. You know, Steam Deck is like seven hundred twenty p, 
And um, this is 1080p. So this is very comparable to the Logitech G Cloud, which is also something like this, but it costs like $300. This costs like $200 and does the same thing. So I backed it. It's supposed to come in May if everything works out. And yeah, I'm a sucker for these for these handheld games. I love the Game Boy. I love the Game Gear. I loved uh, the PlayStation Vita and uh, all this kind of stuff, PlayStation Portable. So mm. yeah, it's it's strange that I don't have the Steam Deck yet. I, I need to get it. And this this thing here, I also backed it. The PlayStation <laughs> compatibility. <to> you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the PlayStation compatibility is what really kind of makes it very tempting for me because that means that yeah. um, essentially, yeah, you can stream you can it and then if you connect. Right. You can play your PlayStation you... 5 games on it, like when you're in bed. Yeah, it's good. And then connect it to those glasses. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, right. That's that's it. Oh my goodness. So many devices that yeah. you just connect to each uh, other. <laughs> exactly. You never it's... need to leave your bed again. Exactly. Yeah. So it's um ah, I'm I'm into the, all this technology. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay, yeah, what a great time to be it's alive. Agreed, agreed. It's a great time to be alive. And yeah, hopefully the absolute is going to come to my doorstep. Has nothing to do with VR, but still I'm excited about it. <laughs> Just to let you guys know. Um, yeah. yeah, but the Steam Deck is also still tempting. I think I need to get all of this stuff. Damn. <laughs> you just, then you just, under that desk of yours, maybe you'll also find all the extra time that you will need <laughs> to play all those games. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but actually for those long flights, the Steam Deck is better because it's local there on the device. Yeah, right? that's exactly. really That's really good. Damn. That that would be something that is a deal breaker for me with all the cloud gaming because I just, uh, yeah, I like not being tethered to the network and just be anywhere out there. Steam right. that right. is awesome. Agreed. Yeah, so you can hook up this here to to the to the Steam Deck, and then you can play the Steam Deck on a very nice big screen. They say two hundred and fifteen inches screen. Like six meters away, you know. I don't like that kind of, yeah, hyperbole. And uh, it could be a 500 inch screen, which is like a thousand meters away or what? No, yeah, keep it real. But it is, it is a big screen. It's a big virtual screen which is floating in front of you. And I enjoyed that on my way on my flight back from Taiwan mm. to Germany. Yeah, right. So thumbs up to the Rokit. I think you got a question from Norman Robinson who donated ten dollars. Oh, oh, cool! I, I didn't see that. Thanks so much. Yeah, Norman. I just noticed it. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, here. Thanks so much, Norman. Um, yeah, let me re let me read the question. Have we considered the potential of an immersive, near life life experience an open AI GPT four five NPC will provide within a VR environment? <gasps> oh, that is a good question. Oh, yeah. Actually, this has already been done um, in Somnium Space. In Somnium Space, one of the users has hooked up an NPC to ChatGPT, and you can totally chat no. with that NPC. And it's no, yes, yes. It's it is like cool replica. Re so you played replica? Maybe some of you played replica AI. It's on SideQuest. It's actually on uh, App Lab as it. well. Oh, really? So. Cool. Replica AI, just Replica, is like a um, started as an Android or iPhone application that's a chat bot. It can be your companion. It can become your friend. It can become more than that. So basically... <laughs> or more it, than that, more than a friend. Yes. Yeah. Really? It's, it can be a bit disturbing, but it can become your, like, let's say, companion. Wow. And it, uh, there was there was this this movie which was like this. What, what was her, it called? OS her. or something? Yeah, her. her. Yeah, exactly. Where where he yeah. falls in love with that op operating system. Yes, it, that's exactly. Actually, someone did fall in love with her. Um, there was a study about about it, <laughs> and uh, that replica works as a. I think it works on the G some kind of chat GPT, like a previous version or something, not the chat GPT we know now, but it has this AI engine that allows to um, analyze what you're saying and give some really meaningful responses and ask you questions. So yeah, Replica AI wow, is something you can so download cool. right now. 
um, on, side on in VR. <laughs> Yeah, on SideQuest and <laughs> it's like an app lab. So okay. it's free. Wow, I didn't know. And so there's this person, like an NPC, and you can talk to her or him, and they'll analyze your speech and reply back. So it's not as advanced as the chat GPT, mm -hmm. but it, I can see how it can totally be hooked up to chat GPT. Yeah, of and course. That, that, the that, is, that is the, the logical thing to do, obviously, yeah, right? So can, exactly. you, can you choose how this um bot looks like yes <laughs> yes you can, you can. let me phrase it like that <laughs> but you don't sound creepy uh you can choose if it's a man or a woman you can choose i think their um ethnicity can i choose the features it's not like sims you can't like <laughs> customize everything but you can like look it up you can even like share what it looks like there is some ah. so sidequest has sidekicks right our verified reviewers there's one sidekick i'll highlight him a bit uh, his youtube channel is called obscure nerd vr he's really funny and he he's makes probably an a obscure lot nerd obscure nerd <laughs> vr he makes real uh, vr uh, videos um with the humoristic twist and he does quite a few replica ai videos oh, cool that sounds and funny though they're really funny some of them are really creepy because the conversations can go like about i don't know from like flowers to suddenly they talk about murdering people <laughs> you know like okay. it just happens um all at once so yeah just give it a go it's, wow. it's it's pretty interesting to just have this weird conversations um that, that I'm is sure really cool. Angels, so um so uh, how would I write it? Replica with replica, K or C or uh, replica AI, I think with the uh K. Ah, that's okay. Replica, replica. AI. Just just looking it up right now. Yeah, you so again you can download it on your phone. <laughs> it can it's just like works as a chat bot ah, that you okay. can talk I to. Thought it was in, I thought it was in VR. It is. Yeah, it is, it in, is VR. in VR. So they made a VR version as well. It's just called Replica VR. Huh. Okay, that is definitely something that I should try very soon. It, so you can like create a new channel and just do Replica VR funny videos. Yeah. Actually, it's just called Replica Early Access on App Lab. Okay. Wow. Yeah, I'm just looking at some videos there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that looks <laughs> tempting to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty fun. Um, it's very interesting. But yeah, that's to that question that um, your community mem member asked. It's totally doable to do something like right. that for it's a VR happening game. already. Do you think it's gonna change? Like, because <clears throat> you can obviously control that, right? You can. It's not just plugging it into Chat GPT. GPT. You, you can, can like give you, this you the characters teach. identities. Yeah, exactly. You can absolutely like uh, teach the AI to behave in a certain way, right? So, wow. oh, Tatiana, I'm telling you, this whole AI topic is unbelievable, and I it's, totally, it's I, I totally, under I totally understand why. Actually, even Mark Zuckerberg, this news came out recently. He's spending most of his time not in horizon worlds or not improving horizon worlds he's spending most of his time in his ai research lab now that is also what boss you know boz this yeah um, boss. boss boss what boss the 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 meta um yeah high manager that what he said that they're spending lots of time in the ai research and vr in the metaverse is kind kind of not so exciting anymore and it's, it's like yeah in, compared to ai it's a very little topic in my opinion the, ai is AI, going to change everything it's it's it, just crazy oh my god yeah it's like the entire podcast can be just about that it took the world by storm like it's a worldwide phenomenon suddenly the chat gpt it's this a revolution journey, it's image image yeah. processing or image uh, rendering video rendering uh language models it's it's going to be as big as internet like internet came and changed everything probably even more ai it's, it's it's going to disrupt every single thing so yeah. that's why i really understand that actually I, I, 
even I, like, who is completely in the XR industry, AI is bigger than AI is way bigger. This is this is going to touch every single person and people, but now they they don't even know what is coming after them. No. Like like uh, lots of jobs are going to be replaced, you know. Like or it's going to change, transform, transform. absolutely. Because I think that it, like even in coding, right? Coding is a big field that um, some IT professionals are concerned that their jobs are going to be taken over. But I think it's not really going to be as straightforward. Maybe the junior coders, yes. But in reality, what's going to happen is that there is going to be a new requirement for these IT professionals to have the skills to give of the course. right commands and to yeah, manipulate this Absolutely. system. So, yeah, it's still not, I don't think it's going to substitute as many jobs as people are afraid of, but the mm, ones I, that are I more automatic. Think, yeah, yeah, right, right. The ones that, that are more automatic, um, right, they might be replaced. And I was also working before as an engineer coding, you know, and actually I was kind of surprised how much of my work consisted of actually simply finding the 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 code snippets at mm -hmm. stack overflow which is a website where people like find uh like like snippets of code which solve their problem and how much actually how much actually it was simply getting stuff and like combining it you know yep. i never re as a programmer i never had to reinvent the wheel i was simply using stuff and it was not so complicated I, so i totally get that actually this is, can be done by computers you know, mm -hmm. finding that right um, piece of code and like putting it all together. Right. So like yeah. the database, like the database, like it's it's everything you need is there. You don't have to search in these different places. Yeah. But but being like a, an engineer, like it still it requires some creative thinking. Exactly. That is the so, point. Like the the inventive part. You know, the inventive like thinking of something new and recombining things in a new way. Yeah. That is that is still what will what humans will do <laughs> until the ai gets so good that they can also do that i think we're not there yet but it, it might happen as well right and then who knows what's going to happen but this is this is so disruptive this is so crazy it's it's mind-boggling and people don't even know what, what's going to happen are you using ChatGPT for your work in any way, or yeah. is it is it a secret? No, <laughs> you don't want to know what you're using it. For. No, no, I'm using ChatGPT completely, a lot to give me ideas, to give me ideas for, um, yeah, for scripting, for 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 um, um, titles of videos, mm -hmm. for, for lots of things. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It can be used for almost any job right now. It's crazy. Yeah. And of course, it will be used for VR as well. Of course, it will be used for gaming. Uh, it's such a great question, Norman. Like, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Norman. GPD. It's such a big topic. We never it even discussed it on this uh, podcast. It is a huge topic. And I, I just imagine how incredibly it's going to be in VR. Like the um, like these these image generating things obviously this will mm -hmm. also work in in a 3d space so it is so much fun for me to prompt mid journey and to let it generate some thumbnails for me yeah so some thumbnails are completely made by mid journey now on mrtv and to oh, be yeah. to be in yeah like for example the the thumbnail that i made for that cool 3d monitors from from Acer, like there's like Kratos coming out of the screen. I made this with with Midjourney. Oh, so really? yeah, so so um, I'm just thinking of how amazing it's it's going to become when this is also in VR, like to do 3D models or to do worlds, and this also is already being done. So think of it: you are in a some kind of um, yeah, Horizon Worlds or, or probably some other app that is a VR world. And then instead of having to sculpt everything with some tools, you can just say, okay, um, imagine a beautiful um, ocean scene and boom, then you're standing in that ocean scene. Imagine that ocean scene 
with i don't know with a beautiful beach right and the palm trees and boom you're standing there it's going to feel like magic I and mean, ai does feel like magic and i do yeah. believe that the metaverse and ai they will complement each other in a beautiful way and yes mm. this npc which are being yeah manipulated by or um, controlled by ai this is going to be so exciting because the npcs will not be stupid anymore you know, yeah. right now they are kind of stupid. They will simply say the same things that have been programmed into them. But they, yeah, but they might be able to say like the same thing in different ways for yeah. ev for a not for every other time you play the for game example. or for different players. Exactly. So when you are watching the gameplay videos, it might not be the same gameplay that you will experience when when you play that game. If there is right. AI that will express these things somewhat differently depending on how you are reacting to them or depending on how you're progressing in the game so then all these gameplays will become even more exciting because you'll be watching their version of the game maybe not you know dramatically different from the way developers have designed it but um but these little interactions will make it feel so much more real especially in vr exactly. and it'll it'll affect flat screen gaming for sure as well absolutely so these games are going to be incredible, I believe, with with chat GPD or GPD four or five or whatever, like yeah, giving us the inputs for these NPCs. Probably they will not become be NPCs anymore, but they will be, be more. They will be an integral part of the game, perhaps. And nobody knows where this game will lead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Right? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not somewhere like creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I still want there to be some limits of how much freedom they will yeah. have. I'm sure there will be some crazy games where developers will be like, jump in, you will not know what will happen <laughs> with you because it will be totally random depending on your oh on the NPC's mood. Like if he feels like killing someone. Who knows? <laughs> feel, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, or you um, might probably really fall in love with that NPC like Replica or in her. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, who knows? People will spend way more time in in VR in the metaverse <laughs> but, than they do now. But can I bring like, just one thing about the GPT four that yes. might it's not as like VR related, but it is a really freaking creepy. So you know this captcha, the test that supposedly right. you click on these images and you need to prove that you're not a robot. So you can Google it. Uh, there was a study where they uh, tested GPT-4 to see if they would be able to somehow go around this CAPTCHA. And they gave it all resources. And that's the first ever AI machine that managed to go around it. Oh, my God. But not in a GPT way that you think. Not in a way it that killed you think. everyone. <laughs> it made it. It did it through deception. Wow! And I will explain what it did. I, remember, it was given the resources to do the job, and by okay. resources, I mean it accessed a website where you can hire someone online. No kidding! Oh my god! Yes, this is this is scary. I'm telling you, AI lied to a human being about oh. being human who is visually oh impaired. Wow. And that is scary. asked them <laughs> to do the captcha for them because they couldn't do it on their own. Look it up. Oh my I'm goodness. Not making it this up. is crazy. Yeah. This is this is unbelievable. This is so disruptive. So think about that. There are no moral grounds. It this this machine, this AI system doesn't have an understanding that oh, I'm a robot. I have to I have to tell the human that I'm a robot. No, it just yeah. said, I'm not a robot. <laughs> I just need your help because I'm impaired and I I need to, I need to get this done. And it's, it's so scary. It's a totally, it's, I'm telling you, it's a different world now since last year, right? When it started with, uh, yeah, with, with all these image generators that, that were suddenly publicly available. And then obviously ChatGPT. it's like when I used it for the first time last year, I couldn't believe how good the answers were to my questions. I couldn't believe what was going on. It was like a total, yeah, it was just, I was mind blown, like never, like very suddenly before. And um, 
the, how disruptive it is, how 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 much it changes everything. It's completely nuts. Like I've been using Google for all of my life. You know, I, I never thought that anything could replace Google. It was completely set. You know, when there was, I was laughing about Bing, right? I, I would never, like, never go to Bing to, to look for something. Mm -hmm. And you know, now Google is dead for me. I don't use Google at all. Everything is in Bing, chat GBD4. You know, because it is GBD4, you can use GBD4 for free on Bing. You know, okay, if, so so you use it now? Are you using yeah. now then for that? Okay. I'm I for all my searches, I'm just in Bing because it it includes Chat GPT four for free. I see. You know, you don't even need to um yeah to pay for Chat GPT plus to to get GPT four. So you just go mm -hmm. to Bing and before like until a week or so you had to sign up and so but now it's for everyone. Everyone can just go to to Bing and. Uh, yeah, sign up there with their Microsoft account and can use GBD4 for free as long as you want. Is 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 that because when you're paying for it, then you kind of keep your data private somehow? But then if you use it for free with Bing, then all your all your yeah, search, all your data are belong to okay. them. <laughs> okay, so that's that's that's, that's the difference. Exactly. So free as in, yeah, whatever you search for, they know. But the, the nice thing is, ChatGPT four is connected to the interwebs on Bing, to the to the live internet, right? So it is so powerful. It's like if I do the same searches on on Bing GPT four as compared to Google, Google is stupid. <laughs> you know, which was last year we still found like okay, cool. Obviously, we all use Google, right, for doing our searches. Now it is stupid. It's like it's like dead. It's dead for me. It's, I haven't okay. used I haven't used Google Search for for a long time now. So wow. yeah, you know I haven't even used the Bing one yet. I, oh no! For some reason, no. It's, for some reason, I I don't know. <laughs> you know what? Like this is like this is this could be like a very scary event for Google. They must really really be very very quick now to to incorporate that into their search as well. You know. Everyone was using Nokia phones and Blackberries, and boom, suddenly they were dead, right? It went very mm -hmm. fast. And I would have never thought that, but Google is really at risk right now. I am not using Google anymore. Zero. Obviously, still Gmail yeah. and stuff. But for search, which is their main way to make money, I'm not using it anymore. Wow. Yeah. Check out Bing with gbd4 the bing I'll chat try it. You, yeah I'll... You try, no you will try it and then you will use it and you will not use google anymore you know that's how it works right every company has its highlight and the top of you know kind of the top of the progression and then there's an inevitable decline whenever something better yeah. comes along yeah. and for some companies this lifespan is longer for some it's shorter but it's never ever forever <laughs> right so gosh if this is it that's that's sad yeah i really thought i didn't i wouldn't be able to see it the end yeah of it's crazy Google. i also thought like wow they are super sad but no they have to be a bit careful so if you want to use bing on on the computer on your laptop or desktop then you need to use their own browser Obviously, they're trying to uh, profit as much as as they can from it, but I'm using it on my phone. So if you want to use Bing with ChatGPT4 on your phone, you can just download the Bing app. And well, I'm and I'm using the Bing app now <laughs> for all my searches. It's so funny. Like Bing was there for for years, right? <laughs> I never used it. Never. Why would I? I had Google. Yeah. But now, okay, everything is on Bing. <laughs> So with on a computer, you you simply just use their um, website, or is there on, also something? Yeah, if you want to use it on on a computer, then you yeah. need to use their um, browser, Edge. Edge. Yeah, right. Of course. Right. <laughs> People were making fun of it for years. Yeah, but now they're not <laughs> laughing anymore. <laughs> like no. I, I was laughing at them, but now I'm using it every day. So huh. yeah. So crazy, crazy. It's see crazy. how we're talking about chat GPT even on a VR yeah. podcast, but I think it's yeah, because, because it's, it's going to affect everything. It's going to it affect going everything. To... It is just so unbelievable. Like 
we we always heard it in the in the in the last years right ai but we never felt it we never could use it and now suddenly we can use it and now we feel that power and yeah it is huge yeah hey hey sigma says never using edge no thanks bro yeah that's what i thought too <laughs> you can you can use it on on your phone using that bing app try it out just try it for your searches yeah <laughs> so yeah ah. anyways yeah there was there was uh, ai <laughs> probably we're going to <laughs> talk more about it in the future oh yeah right oh, because yeah. it's just so disruptive it's 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 kind of funny because I haven't really thought about it as much as I did like during this show when I was thinking about okay how is it actually going to affect AI like game uh, affect gaming not just VR gaming but I, I think in VR is going to be even more perceptible because it already feels so much more real being immersed in it and if NPCs and the world around you is being generated in this very natural way. My goodness, yeah, this is <laughs> this is like a scary thing. But at the same time, I can't wait to see what it's going to look like. Yeah, just because we are stepping into like a rev revolutionary paradigm changing, totally uh, paradigm shift for gaming. No. Yeah, absolutely. Also for other things like designing things. So I am not good at art. You know, I could never have done a thumbnail like I did it for this video with the 3D monitors, mm -hmm. but now I can. And it, it felt great. It was fun to try different prompts. So I can't wait until this is also in VR and we can really make our own worlds using a prompt. Yeah. So, wow. <laughs> this, is, this, is, <laughs> this is going to be huge for something like VR chat. You know, once yeah. you can build your own worlds in VR chat by using prompts. Wow. That is going to be huge oh goodness so it does also affect vr <laughs> you know so. yep yep it's we need to be prepared for this that's why we have these conversations exactly wow tatiana you know what before the show we thought like, okay this is going to be a short show we don't have anything to talk about now we are at one hour and 52 and we haven't even started to talk about the pumice crystal Ooh. Well, wow. to be fair, we do talk about Pyramid Crystal almost every show, we so did. it's not yeah. like it's not like we're leaving them out. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but we still, if you still but have a few minutes, we should us. still talk about it. Sure, yeah, right? I, I, I'm still waiting for it, so I, I will listen to your thoughts thoughts about it. Yeah, you and, can also um, ask me. Yeah, yeah, and and very soon, very soon, I will have more things to say about it as well. Great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to find out what what you think. So I know you have already tested it at the road show, and you liked it, right? Yes. Um, so obviously, it was very controlled, and um, right. I didn't test it in a in a um, traditional way where I would look at everything and be very critical about it because they're very transparent about saying, "Hey, this is not ready." This still sucks this still sucks this still sucks but we will be fixing it up but personally for me like the the major thing that i'm looking forward to is just having the the headset that offers the best freaking clarity i've ever seen in vr that's a point and yeah that's that's something i want to see other things like we we kind of talked a little bit about uh local dimming uh tracking Mm, I know that they now have some issues with the battery, which came as a big surprise. Mm -hmm. Do you want yeah. to? How yeah, much let, do you want to talk about? Let me about talk it? about everything. <laughs> let me talk about <laughs> the whole <laughs> thing. It's uh, it's an interesting topic, and I know yeah, quite a few people are watching this because they want to know more about the crystal. So obviously, I've done a lot of videos about the crystal on the channel recently. Like I filmed everything that I did at the Pymex headquarters and people could join these kind of live tests through my videos, which I hope that everyone enjoyed it. So I did have the crystal at home before I went to China, to, to Shanghai, to the Pymex headquarters. Very nice headquarters, by the way. It looked very cool and lots of people are working there. A lot of people, like hundreds of people are, are there. That was surprising how many people are actually working at Pymex and uh, yeah, what kind of big company it had become. So they have really, they've grown rapidly and 
that is good to see. So I did have the device already at home before mm -hmm. I went to the headquarter and there I could test everything with the device, right? Everything that I wanted and it was cool. Mm -hmm. My only problem was that in Taiwan at home, um, I didn't have like a really beefy computer. I was testing it on a 3080 laptop, mobile 3080. So that worked, right? For some stuff, I could play um, half of Alex. I could do other things. But people who are buying the Crystal are not going to buy it to play it on a mobile 3080 computer. They're going to have like a desktop 3080, 3090, or probably 4080, 4090. That's the normal use case. So that is good because then finally at the Pimax headquarter, obviously they had a 4090 there. I also tried it with a 3090, which also worked way better than on my laptop. And yeah, that was great. And I can just mm -hmm. say they have done lots of progress as compared to the state that you saw it in and that I saw it in when they were on that roadshow. Mm -hmm. So first of all, really important, at the roadshow here in Europe, I think that already kind of solved it in the States, I had this big issue with the lenses. There was something wrong with the lenses. It felt like there was a diopter already built into them and it was simply not sharp. There was something wrong. Right. So that was the big issue that I found with the lenses. And I'm super happy to tell you, yes, they have absolutely solved this issue. I could be in that headset without my eyes having to do lots of extra work to kind of like counteract that wrong diopter setting. So, yes, they have absolutely solved this issue. And even when I went into the headset with my glasses, as in with normal 2020 vision, no problems at all. It was super clear. And that's, in my opinion, what this headset is truly about. Giving people the yeah, the best visuals that so far we've seen. This crystal clear picture quality. And that is really the, the, that thing that stood out. Does it look better than the Arrow? I must say yes. It has this super, super nice clarity without the distortions at the edges and with better colors thanks to that local dimming. So absolutely for that part, for the visuals, absolutely convincing. If you want the best, it is this right now. I haven't tried the Beyond. I'm looking forward to try the, the Beyond, but for that, for that right now, it was the best. Local dimming you mentioned. Right. So on my device that I had at home, the local dimming worked in most of the cases, but in some cases, the local dimming algorithm was not perfect yet. Like for example, um, in Kayak Mirage, for example, we have these nice night scenes, right? Where the moon is being reflected in the water. And normally that is nice. But when I tried it at home with, with my crystal, the the local dimming algorithm seemed not to uh, yeah to capture that correctly so the reflection of the moon made the made the backlight work or turn it on and it felt like you are like kayaking through fog of war <laughs> mm -hmm. it was bad it was really it was really not nice for that but when i tried the same game in the same the same setting at the headquarter, they had already adjusted that algorithm okay. and it was not like this anymore. So that was fixed already. That was that was good. However, I felt that it was even too dark now. So the problem that I felt with the local dimming was that it was not bright enough. It was too dark. <laughs> so yeah, I was kayaking through that night scene and it really, really felt like, okay, it should be a bit brighter. Yeah. And and I told them that as well. And um, yeah, they they also agreed that it could be brighter, for example, in, in, the, in some scenes. And for that, they are incorporating a slider. So you can set the intensity of that backlight for every single game, just how you wish. 
it oh, should be. Okay. And that's good. I'm looking forward to, to try that out. Probably you can yeah. try it already when you get it um, next week, the device. Hopefully they've already built mm -hmm. that in. This was not built in yet when I was at the Shanghai headquarter. Yeah, but in general, I can say, yeah, local dimming works and it does oh, make a great. difference. It's like oh, the blacks are just, yes, yeah, super nice, <laughs> super black. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. I mean, I saw it in the games that did not have that kind of issue with this reflection thing. So I yeah. think it was really dangerous. Oh yeah. my god, really it was dangerous! So, it was fantastic. So cool. And I was yeah. just going to ask if you, if they on the software side, they will have some kind of a slider yes. or an option to control that backlight because at CES they added a switch that would turn it off and yeah. on. This this one they had already difference. exactly you, either oh. on or off. Wow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, wow, you can really see, even compared to Vario Aero, right? The clarity is great there, but you can totally see that without local dimming, it just looks gray, right? Black looks more dark gray. Absolutely. Than black. Absolutely. I played Elite Dangerous. Perfect. It's just oh, exactly right. Because people who, who love Elite Dangerous, right? They know, okay, lots of space, lots of dark, lots of black black space and for these kind of games this local dimming is just so good it's just such a big difference and Amazing. yeah it's, ah, can't wait yeah you will, you will have fun with that you will really have fun with that and the other game that totally blew me away unfortunately i didn't make a video for that one was squadrons star wars ah, squadrons oh, nice, it looks nice. so good it looks nice. so good just the perfect blacks and then the things that were that were like colorful, beautiful colors, yeah, great, yeah. Like really what loved about, it. <laughs> I will be asking you some questions. Yeah, though. Please. Um, there was something um, about. Uh, oh goodness! Um, I know that there's like PC VR gaming that we are all looking um, at <laughs> right now. That's like the strong point of Crystal. But um, among the community, like in the community, I see many people actually being very interested in the standalone aspect of it. Yeah, right. Which surprised me a little bit because I I don't really care much for it. I know it's going to be there, but um, with that hardware that you get with it, with that clarity, I would absolutely enjoy uh, the Steam games. But still, right. you are paying for all of this package. So is, right. is the standalone aspect ready? It's ready. And I tried it. I have not yet made a video about it but yes it is ready they let me try it and what i was trying was um tilt brush or open brush you know this this drawing game where you can simply draw in virtual reality and yeah it worked perfectly with six degrees of freedom tracking was perfectly fine and that was also surprising i had before before i got the unit i had thought that okay Somehow the tracking might not be as good as other devices. You know, we had this talk here with Sweeviver as well um, in the podcast. But no, they have done a good job as well. Even they are using that stock um, Qualcomm tracking. It seems they have yeah, improved it. It works really fine. I had no problems with it. And mm -hmm. also for the standalone mode, yeah, playing mm -hmm. this tilt brush with this nice FOV, but it's, it's not as huge as the, the Pimax 8KX and these other headsets, right? So in terms of FOV, that is just good. It's it's somewhere close to index, not even reaching index, but it's good. It's a nice FOV. Probably something that the, the, the Pico 4 gives us. Mm -hmm. You know, so like a very nice, bigger, bigger than standard FOV. And yeah, having that in standalone with this perfect blacks and these nice colors yeah i had a good time in standalone mode with that mm -hmm. but honestly speaking in my opinion this standalone mode is useful for the crystal in one way and that is to use virtual desktop to stream the steam vr games wirelessly to the Pimax crystal that is what it's really for in my opinion, people are not going to use the crystal in order to play standalone games. There will be yeah. some standalone games for sure, but Pimax is going to have a hard time to get all the developers on the platform, right? Because they are not going to sell this device in masses, 
right? They are going to sell like a few thousand pieces probably. And then it's normally not so attractive for developers to spend that time and money to port their games to the device. But they are in touch with Guy Godin from Virtual Desktop. And yeah, they are working on it. So having Virtual Desktop on the Pamis Crystal and streaming PC VR games wirelessly to the device, yes, that is the use case for the standalone mode, in my but, opinion. But even in the chat, you can see there are quite a few people who are interested yeah, in actual standalone yeah, that's, games. That is really interesting. That's really interesting uh, to see, yeah. Which surprised me a bit too, because I don't think uh, Pimax will have that big of a library. And that's, then, well, that's also what I think. Uh, for a standalone headset, it's a rather heavy and bulky one when you compare it to right. something that was made to be standalone. So absolutely, it's it's um, tough for them to compete against something like the Pico Four, right? Which is like super sleek. It also has this nice FOV. Also has like a good resolution and looks fantastic on virtual desktop. Agreed. Mm -hmm. So, but I still think it is it is kind of useful to have the the wireless mode for people who really hate the cable. And who want to try it out wirelessly, they can with the crystal. Like, I'm probably going to use it more for seated games, like for Microsoft Flight Simulator, which was absolutely stunning in the crystal. I believe that Steve is going to have a fantastic time. Greetings to Steve. Hopefully, you're listening to this, and probably you are. Uh, Steve is going to have a ball with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But for um, these people who, who don't want to play um, like seated games, and to need that wireless freedom, at least they have the option, you know, like for something like the Reverb, Reverb G2 or the Arrow, the option is not there. But thanks to having the standalone mode there, yes, at least the option to go wireless is there. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's the main thing. I think another thing that they were promoting back in the day was the eye tracking and face right. tracking. So yes. like the full face tracking. Yeah. I haven't heard much nothing about for that, that part, progress. For for face tracking, um, I have heard nothing about it. Eye tracking, yes, it worked as well. I they gave me a demo and yeah, it simply worked. But I didn't get a demo yet about uh, like um, um dynamic foveated rendering. Okay. Which they so also not, not that. No, that's something that they also want to work on and they want to have like a working foveated rendering ready like in May, I think, what the CEO told me in the interview. But the eye tracking already worked. So mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing what you get in that package, right? You get, wow, well, the, yeah, the super clear image. You get a standalone headset that you can use wirelessly. The controllers are already included. You have auto IPD adjustment because there are motors in the headset. Yeah, it is actually really a nice headset. And in my opinion, this is the best headset that Pimax has ever made. Because for the headsets before, they did have the super wide FOV, but not everyone was comfortable with the optics. There were quite a few people who simply couldn't use these headsets, right? Because something was not right with the optics. It felt like yeah, something is off. And kind of either you were fine with it because you're not so susceptible to this kind of problems or you couldn't use them. For this headset, though, it just feels as comfortable optically as your Quest 2 or as a HP Reverb 2 or as, a, as an index. But that with that higher, super nice um, yeah, um, resolution and the nice colors. So that is, in my opinion, truly the best Pimax headset that they have done so far. It and, feels like that. And it is more it is more of a mainstream headset even that more people could buy. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I really liked what I saw there. So that was really nice. And yeah, talking about the, the, the batteries, right? You also mentioned the, the battery part, which is like some kind of like a controversial thing. Um, the device yeah also needs the battery to be inside the headset when it's being used in PC VR mode. And the first reaction to that, also my first reaction was like, huh? <laughs> why? <laughs> that sucks, right? And come on, it's connected to your computer. It, yeah. should, it, it should simply run, 
right? Without That's battery. Nice. And and that is an understandable reaction. And also, again, it was my first reaction as well. However, once you understand why that is the case, you will get it. The thing is simple, is simple. The thing runs on a Qualcomm XR2 chipset. And they have the requirement from Qualcomm in order to be allowed to use this chip, it needs to run off battery. It is not allowed to run from, from a current, from, from your normal... Yeah, from an outlet. So they they simply have this restriction that they have to honor. So the device is running off a battery, also in PC VR mode. And what they are trying to do, they're getting energy from that USB cable that is um, plugged into the main board from two USB cables. And what they're trying to do is to recharge the battery on the fly to be able to get as much playing time on the device as possible. And they are now um, supplying like a USB, a powered USB hub with the device. And now, right now with how they, are, how they are going to give it to the people, you can have six hours of continuous gameplay. And then after six hours, you must exchange the battery. And they're supplying a second battery. So while you're playing six hours, you can you can charge that other battery and then you can use like 10 seconds to hot swap it and uh, you hot swap it. You can hot swap it, right? So you even don't need to get out of your experience. In my opinion, six hours are enough. So I, I'm seldom in my in VR for six hours. So for me, that is no problem. So after I'm done with my session, the battery will automatically be recharged. I don't even have to change it, right? So for my personal use case, the six hours are fine. I'm not sure about, about you, Tatiana. What are your thoughts about being able to play for six hours and then having to swap? Well, actually, last I've heard when I spoke to someone from Pimax, who, by the way, said that he, um, he had just... Uh, had you in his office, he said three or four hours, and he said that six hours was the goal. Uh, but um, at least he said that they are not there yet. They are, um, they are not. They are there now yet. They are there now. Hmm. Yeah. Well, in that case, I guess it's not bad. <laughs> uh, I know. I I just I kept I kept remembering how Steve was saying that he can sit for six hours. Yeah. Just like playing Microsoft Flight yeah. Sim, which I still I think, don't know I think how he's able to do that. Definitely, definitely. I do think for some people, this is a restriction that might be a showstopper for, for these people who who are in VR for eight hours without a break completely. Okay, then this is not for you. Definitely. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I yeah. guess it. it's so it's it's more it's more of an issue of if you are playing standalone, though, or if you're trying to play PC VR that's um, with a, oh my God, with a virtual desktop, then what's the battery life like? Yeah. Um, on, on, if you are using standalone, then it's two hours. Yeah. So at least it's a good thing that they decided to go with two batteries in the box without making you have to buy the second one to be right. able to hot swap it. Agreed. So that's a great decision. And right. um, yeah, again, I never found myself playing in one sitting for longer than two hours. That was like the top for me that I yeah. can take. And um, yeah, it was just people like flight sim, you know, enthusiasts who really this headset is going to benefit most because right. it is heavy. It is something that you probably would prefer to play like sitting, sitting down instead of moving very quickly then like the longer you can you can stay in vr the better but speaking of, of comfort what do you think about it because that's also a big a big kind of a yeah. stumbling so point is, for Pimax. like like without a doubt it is a bulky headset it is more bulky than uh the pico 4 or the quest 2 or the the, the quest pro without a doubt right it's it's quite a bulky headset and um i would very much compare it with the comfort of the Pimax headset that came before, like the Pimax 8KX, for example. It's a very similar head strap, like nearly the same. Yeah, not exactly the same, but nearly the same. And also in terms of, yeah, of, of, 
of the bulk and what you have on your head, definitely um, very comparable. So I I don't think it's a game. It's a showstopper. Again, like it is. It is um, once you wear it, it is balanced. It's quite. It's no, it, it's actually completely balanced. It's not like front heavy or so. So it is balanced on your head, and then it's fine. Um, however, because you do have quite some 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 something substantial on your head, if you do um, like fast head movements, you will feel like um, how is it called inertia or something like it will still keep on. Yeah. It will still keep on moving, a little moving bit in that after direction. After your head has stopped. Yeah. Yeah, after your head has stopped, exactly. <laughs> so it is in that regard definitely not perfect, right? But it's it's it feels comfortable enough to wear it for hours. If you're in a flight sim or if you're in a racing sim. Yeah. So it is okay, but definitely it will have a hard time to compete against something like the big screen beyond or the Pico 4. Or here, <laughs> this year, <laughs> right? This is this is really this is actually very comfortable on the head, right? The yeah, DTVR but before. it can't compete with Pimax, right? Something like no, this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's 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 interesting. So it has its pros, like the great colors and the really really beautiful resolution, and the local dimming, right? And the IPD or the auto IPD. Yeah, good enough audio. Yeah, perfect picture, bigger FOV than the Beyond for sure, right? But also it has its drawbacks. Like it's it's uh yeah, it's not a sleek headset. It's a it's quite a blocky headset. It's yeah. What what other negatives? <laughs> Let me think well, I it. guess you would need a really powerful PC too. Yeah, you it. need you need a powerful PC for sure, but yeah. the but the people who who buy this, they have a powerful PC, right? It's it's really for those enthusiasts who That's have the thing, a thirty ninety not... or forty eighty forty. That's 49. the thing. It looks like it's not because the there's a considerable number of people who are looking to get it for standalone because yep. they don't have a PC yet. That is, and then maybe yeah. they'll get it later. Well, so that's just so interesting for me. But that is, you know, what I would need to see numbers of that like how many percent really buy this for standalone i truly don't believe it's more than 10 percent or even five percent who buy this for standalone i believe the huge majority is going to buy this for microsoft flight simulator for a set of corsa competizione and for all these things so i'm sure they have done their market research is I, there I a, is, so. can we, can we do a can we do a poll because like Dante's VR Inferno is saying that he wants us to stand alone. Someone else mentioned stand alone. I'm just curious, like okay, if yeah, you know this. if people in the chat, if you were to buy it, what would you use it for most at this time? Like not in the future when you buy a better PC or something, but. But right now, I'm just I'm just curious because yeah, I've seen it here. I've seen it in some of like you know my community, uh, even at work. I have a coworker who's like, "Oh, you'll be getting Pimax Crystal." I really want it for face tracking. <laughs> like who face what? tracking? Okay. Yes, yes, for for VR chat face tracking and stuff like that, so okay. that you don't have to have any external like Vive face tracking things. Let me do this poll right now. What are you? Going to use Pimax Crystal for question mark <laughs> standalone or standalone or, or PC VR? Mm -hmm. Yes, standalone or PC VR. Okay, ask your community, and here we go. <laughs> yeah, there you now, go. now it's live. You can now tell us what are you going to use your crystal for is it going to be pc vr or is it going to be standalone mode yeah yeah let, so let us know let us know down in the description no no <laughs> <laughs> in, in the, we're getting tired you know it's already two hours yeah, and 20 minutes yeah, right. we're going and to we spend 25 we, minutes to we, set up this yeah you're screen. right yeah you're right we're going to wrap up soon for sure yeah mm -hmm. um yeah so so um, I really think this is this is going to be a nice headset for a PC VR enthusiast who can live with those shortcomings 
like um, the the six hours or eight. they want to do eight hours with with um, optimizations, but six hours right now continuous play. I've just seen in the in the chat that uh, Voodoo, my German colleague, he actually ran it for nine hours by um, there's a USB C another USB C so by plugging this in as well, so probably you can even do nine hours right now. So I, I truly believe that this battery thing is not a, an issue. If you're not, if you don't want to stay in VR for eight hours at a time or whatever, hmm. um, yeah. yeah. Well, hmm. I guess it's just it's just strange, right? That you need a battery. It, it seems like it seems like they didn't test the power consumption from their headset before they they made it up. It looks like the power consumption is higher than yeah. their recharge power, but yeah, then it the is point. a requirement. That's the point. That's Qualcomm. the point right now. And I asked them, yeah, why can other headsets do this? Like the why can the Pico uh, Pico three link do this? And yeah, they seem to be not using as much power as the Pimax Crystal. Yeah. So what are you going to use the Pimax Crystal for? Like now, eighty six percent. Are you going to use it for PC VR and 14% for standalone? But we have we have only 38 votes, so we need more votes. If you would buy the crystal, what would you use it for? <laughs> Please let us know now. We definitely need more votes. We have way more people who are watching this right now. So give us your vote to make this this poll better. I right. just voted, so I brought the PC VR a little bit higher. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> well, I just wanted to see the result. But yeah, yeah, you got me a bit excited about it because, yeah, I, I was yeah. a little kind of concerned about, I mean, the battery sort of, I would be okay with it again because I wouldn't play it for, for so long. But uh, local dimming, I hope that they would fix it by the time I receive it. So I'm glad so that they too. did. Yeah. I, I still have to check out how good is that slider and you will check it out as well. Because mm -hmm. like I felt it was too dark what I saw in some scenes. You know, it was like black like, like crush in some scenes where I couldn't see details anymore. And yeah, I hope for that slider to make up for it. So we will see about that. Audio wise... For all people who uh, pre-order it right now or until um, June, actually, they will get the DMAS, which is that that um, kind of solution, which is very similar to what we see in the index and in the G2. So that is good, way better than the other solution. So, yeah, you want the DMAS for sure. And I think they will give it to you <laughs> when they send it to you. <laughs> yeah, what other yeah. concerns were there? Uh, other concerns... So we talked about weight, we talked about comfort, and that, um, yeah, I can't remember at the moment, really. Yeah. It sounds great. I mean, again, I, I, I really look forward to, to checking right. it out. Yeah. So excited. Yeah, right. Probably... Photo shipped. I have a tracking number. It's oh, coming, baby. Okay, cool. It's coming. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. Looking forward to see content about the Crystal on your channel as well. So, yeah, probably... Probably the issue that my, some people have will be the the comfort, right? Like how will they how will they fit on their head? Like, uh, oh, oh, the lenses, right? That you said that the other lens, the forty two ah, one, right. it says it's that still stretching the the yeah. image a little bit. Yeah, yeah, right. So I I only enjoyed the thirty five PPD lenses. Yes, same here. They were the only same lens here. that I enjoyed. Like the other, the forty two, it looked sharp, but it was full of distortions. And for the for the wide FOV lenses, yes, they did give me more FOV, but the image was just stretched, so it was not yet um, rendered correctly. It did not take into consideration that now the image comes through this wide FOV lenses, so that didn't work for me. So for me, only the thirty-five PPD lenses they worked, but they worked really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the. Th I still think it's a little bit of a gimmicky kind of thing <laughs> just another thing for them to work on and yeah. they could instead they could just commit to one lens uh, yeah and just i also agree perfect. actually i really like the 35 ppd lens they were just perfect for me also the for me yeah. the fov was nice big enough mm -hmm. right yeah but who knows if they manage to make this uh the rendering correct for the wide fov lenses probably it's going to be good as well but i'm not sure if they yeah, have to compromise again on the binocular overlap for these other lenses. Because for the 35 PPD lenses, 
yeah, it also has a nice binocular overlap. It's really optically exactly right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just fear that they would compromise again if they try to stretch the image further. So, yeah. 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 So I was perfectly happy with that one as well. Uh, right. may, I'm afraid that they just made, they created a little, little bit more work for them, for, for themselves, and they will spend their resources on fixing that instead yeah. of maybe working on some of the existing things. You know, if they only had one lens, then they would be done. It's already perfect. And they could use those resources to work on something. Agreed. Something Agreed. Different. It's like, it feels like, wow, they want to put everything into this headset. So I agree with you. I, I would be perfectly happy if it just came with the 35 PD lenses and not even no change, no chance to change it anyhow, right? Um, yeah, because then you can just say, you know what? This is our headset. It's super crystal clear. It has a good FOV, right? Um, bigger than standard. And that's just to maximize the crystal clarity. Yeah. Anyways, now it's what we have. It's also interesting. You don't need to change the lenses. You can simply let the 35 PPD lenses stay there. And then you have that device, right? But who <laughs> yeah. knows? Who knows? Probably they pull it off with the wide FOV lenses as well. You will see it. I'm not sure if they're going to send you some uh, the wide FOV lenses. I don't have them, for example. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Soon yeah. enough. <laughs> exactly. Oh, great. Yeah, thank yeah. you for this rundown. That was great. I I've, I, I had a little bit of a, of a, or a chat with someone from Pymex. Now it's great to hear kind of uh, your thoughts about those concerning issues yeah. that, that were not maybe as bad. No, so, not at all, actually. Yeah, yeah. So really this is forward. really, this is a headset that I'm looking forward to and that I believe enthusiasts will enjoy. It's not for the mainstream, obviously, for the price, right? But this is going to find buyers for sure right yeah excellent yeah, yeah cool coming cool. soon coming Ooh, soon coming stuff. soon to a channel near you to a vr channel near you and to you <laughs> and to people of course who bought it hopefully soon yeah yeah okay cool so that's that um we have one more topic but honestly i don't think we should go into it it's because also we don't have so many new infos and we have talked about the Apple Reality Pro headset for many, um, many of our episodes. So we are not going to get into it now, but we can say that, yes, it seems like finally Apple is at least going to present it at WWDC, which is going to have uh, going to happen in summer in a couple of months. So finally, we're going to find out what they have in store for us, how they're going to yeah, revolutionize <laughs> VR again. Like, hopefully, they did it with um, the iPhone. And yeah, let's see. Let's see how that goes. Um, and it's going it's like, to come out in this year, it it's seems. It's like June 5th, June 9th. Is that Apple Worldwide Developers Conference? Yeah. I see June 5th, June 9th. Right, right. And uh, then what are your feelings about it? Are you ex excited about it? That's that it is going to come out this year, like what we heard from all the rumors right now. Yeah, I am. I'm just a bit bummed about the timeline because uh, I'm going to be taking about a three month break during the summer, uh, not okay. really doing anything <laughs> about right. VR. I will be busy with some big life, family changing, exciting <laughs> events. Yes. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, I will. I will still be kind of passively watching it all um, unfold, and um, hopefully jump in on it again when um, when I'm when I know better what I'm what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not going for out of VR forever. I'm definitely coming back. So. Um, I will be watching your channel and seeing you covering it as well. I will I will obviously cover it. You know, like, uh, wow, I will totally try to get it. Like, I think, like, Apple doesn't need to send it to the VR forks, no. right? No. They will, not, they, will not, they will not need it to send it to the likes of us. So we'll have to fight for it, just like I'll every I'll have to get other. it too, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to get it too. I'm no. already like setting aside some monies for it. I will buy it. I will buy it too. 
Of it's, a, it's a great thing. I mean, if it's AR, if I can be in, the, in, in VR or AR and see my real surroundings, then I can kind yeah, of <laughs> be, exactly. be present in the world, um, test different features exactly. without being completely isolated. It should be like this. So, yeah, let's see how we're going to like it. So you will see it definitely on our channels then, dear friends out there. Apple, Reality Pro, it seems like it is finally going to happen in the year 2023. Wow. Interesting. Let's see if Apple pulls it off. Yeah. yeah. It's been a long time coming. Yep. I think. I think they will. I have a good feeling about it. Anyways, let's wrap up today's show. Again, two hours and 30 minutes, a long show. But I think people needed it. Finally, the Next Dimension <laughs> podcast again. Yes, <laughs> so, yes. so good to be back. So if you enjoyed it, if you are happy that we are back, give it a thumbs up right now. All the people watching it right now, give it a thumbs up right now. And of course, do leave us a comment. That is important for the algorithm so that Google knows, yes, people want to watch a two and a half hour show. So do leave a comment. Do let us know what you thought of us being back, what you thought about today's show, what you thought about our little um, AI talk. <laughs> that was interesting, right? That was interesting. Yeah, that yeah. Was, probably going to come back too. It, it will come back for sure because it's, it's just so disruptive. Yeah, check out the Bing chat, <laughs> the, the AI, the GBD4, right? You can download the Bing app to check it out. It is it is pretty wild. Yeah, you will see. Yeah. You will not use Google anymore after you do that. And also, again, I would like to thank our sponsor, Bobo VR, makers of amazing accessories for the Quest 4 and for the Pico 4. And yeah, in the future, also PSVR too. So definitely thanks, Bobo VR, for sponsoring Yay. this show. Definitely my favorite accessories for VR. And um, that was incredible. I'm so glad to make this partnership happen, right? Really oh, good. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah really good, really it. good. And yeah, um, if if you are a company out there and if you want to get in front of the VR community, this is really, really a good place to do that. So if you want to sponsor a future show, simply get in touch with me or Tatiana. You can get our contacts in the description and probably we're going to feature your company as well. Yes. Yeah. Maybe we should also wrap up the poll just so that ah, people yeah. know what's exactly. happened. So... We were asking, what are you going to use the Pamic Crystal for? 12% said standalone mode. Wow, that's actually quite good. And the rest, 88% said they're going to do Steam, uh, yeah, PC VR. Yeah, that, that, is, that is what I thought. So the, the vast majority is using it for PC VR. But 12% is actually more than I thought. They would they mm. want to use the Pimax Crystal for for standalone. Yeah. Interesting. We had a we we kind of had a small pool of people, sixty eight votes. But if you translated it into a larger um, group, then that would be kind of a substantial number, I think. This yeah. more than I thought. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So interesting that people want to use it for standalone as well. Anyways, totally hope that you enjoyed it again. I think um, don't forget the thumbs up right now. And if you want to even say thank you in a better way, we would love it if you would give this podcast a five star review, Spotify or iTunes. Simply get out your iPad or your iPhone, open the podcast app, find us, and give us that five star review. That would really mean a lot to us and allow more people to find this podcast. That is everything that we got. For today, the Next Dimension podcast is back. <laughs> and I love this episode again. It was amazing to catch up with you, Tatiana. Yeah, it was great to hear about you, all your adventures. Yeah, wow, more to come. That's everything that we have. And we look forward to see and hear you in the next episode. Until then, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <sighs> yes, good to be back. <laughs> it has been How a while, right? How did we talk for two hours? I have minutes? no idea. More than two hours. And we didn't really have 
big topics, right? It was really just I like mean, my time in China and what you did. I, I think that's why we felt free to kind of deviate from right, the topic exactly, a little bit. Exactly. Maybe normally we would stick to VR. Yeah, right. But we kind of felt like it was appropriate to talk about slightly yeah. none of your things like the glasses, right. the chat GPT. Yep. AI, you know, AI is really such a huge topic and we have never talked about it on this no. podcast. And yes, oh even, even though this is a VR podcast or XR podcast, it will affect XR as well. You know, like like we we, we said, right? Like, yeah, we will make um, worlds in VR thanks to AI and so on and so forth. <laughs> Someone thinks that we don't know we're streaming. Hey, guys. Yes, we know. We know. <laughs> this is the after show. This is the, after, the after, show. after show. This is this is the after show. We're totally aware we're of... Pranking, we're pranking the community into yeah, thinking right. <laughs> that we're streaming some secret... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> The secret we thing, secretly, yeah. We secretly hate VR and everything <laughs> we hate about it. Damn, damn. And you know, Tatiana, you know, I've already used the Apple headset, and it's not as good as I thought it would be. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> no, no, no. Kidding, kidding. Yeah. It is pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. thanks for sticking around for for the mini after show. Yeah, then. exactly, <laughs> exactly. Thanks for sticking around, and I'm really glad that this podcast is back. And yeah, we'll be back next week again as well. Hope that Steve can be back as well again. I think yes. So yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's now for the little after show. <laughs> and now yeah. here it's 11 p.m. in Germany. I'm going to get ready to get some food and then go to bed soon. Okay, that's the end of the after show. <laughs> Until then, bye-bye. Bye-bye.